Charles says, do you think someone with BPD could become a five without it being in remission? I mean, I think anything is possible. It's just dependent on the individual, which actually brings me into kind of the premise of how my brain thinks. And I want to express that to you guys. So first and foremost, for those of you who are new subscribers, I have lived many lives and I have come upon this life that I'm living now that I think is like one of the better decisions I've made, but obviously it's temporary because we're always growing and always changing. So who knows who I'll be at 42 and I can't wait to meet her, but I'm certainly not her yet. So I'm this person right now. And I've been lots of different Britneys. I've lived lots of different lives, you know? I'm that friend in the anime that just like has been so many different people. And I've settled on this person for now. And I think she's really great. And I think she's really stable. And she's really joyful. And I really like her. And even talking in third person about myself really annoys some people. So I want you to hold on to that thought of when you hear somebody different from you speaking, why does it annoy you? So ultimately, I would say that has to do with your perception. Right. So going back to Charles's question, do you think someone with BPD could become a five without being without it being in remission? You're asking me if somebody, one of the eight billion people with one of this one person with this diagnosis called borderline, which is a construct, right, could do something. Well, obviously, someone's probably going to do it. Right. And so uh, my brain doesn't go, oh, they wouldn't be able to do it. My brain goes, yeah, probably. But who is that person? Because I think all people exist on the planet of eight billion people diverse and unique consciousness is, you know what I mean? I just think we all exist in our vastness and our diversity. So when people are experiencing one another, I'm experiencing you, you're experiencing me, there's going to be a conflict and that conflict is going to come with perception. Now past the perception, it's also going to come with an understanding of values, morals, self, and ethics. And those things are all very specific categories. So when somebody comes onto my video and says, I hate the way Brittany speaks in the third person. I really hate that. They're not telling me something about myself. They're telling me something about them. And it's my job to say, okay, what, what are they trying to tell me about themselves? They're trying to say they're uncomfortable. They're trying to say they're angry. They're trying to say something about the way that I talk irritates them. Okay, these are all different kinds of variations of different feelings. And then I have to decide if I'm gonna do the emotional labor to take that upon myself and deconstruct it with them or for them and hand it back to them and be a mirror. And most of the time, I'm probably not going to do that, though I do tend to, you know, answer a lot of my comments and I tend to answer most of my chat and I try my hardest to have that conversation because that's what fuels my joy is like curiosity, understanding people, dissecting, you know, their experiences and trying to figure out what can I learn. And I'm not coming from a perspective of academia because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a graduate of any college. I don't have a PhD. I'm just a person. I'm a person who's lived a life that I don't think is universal or for everybody. So I lived a life that was, you know, within these cultural bubbles and I popped all these bubbles and I realized like I don't fit into the world the way other people fit into the world. Why don't I fit into the world the way other people fit into the world? Well, a part of it is that the world is built with these like rules and scripts. And these rules and scripts are really, really helpful when building a society. And then they make these Hollywood movies about this individual who goes against the grain and is different from society and who's trying to make it better. But if you actually were ever the person who is different from society, they would actually alienate you. So these dreams and these movies and these animes and these art pieces we create about this anomaly within the structure, in real life, that person is not actually vibing with society any more than they were in the movie. But yet we make films and we talk about those people like they are the goal. But then when we witness it or, you know, examine it, we tell them you're not normal. You're not like the rest of us. And because you're not like the rest of us, we don't know what to do with you. Leave people alone is the answer, right? Now, when you live in a society, though, you have to have an expectation of behavior so that we can work in conjunction. So these are two separate ideas, right? One is an ethics idea about what society should be doing and how they should be interacting. And one is a morals idea, what the individual should be doing and experiencing. And those two things are constantly coming into conflict with one another. And those two things are the creation and the deviation between peace and in conflict, right? So Brittany, when she's speaking on her channel, is mostly talking about morals and how the individual can find a relationship with itself separate from the ethics of society, which it, you know, we all live in as citizens and I'm happy to coincide with the rules. I'm happy to get along with people. I'm happy to follow like the rules, whatever they are. While still advocating as a voter, maybe to change those rules because that's also a part of my identity, right? I'm not only a Britney on a planet, 
and I'm also past that just a living like part of the living organism that is the universe of course right but more than that I'm also a citizen of the like America I'm trying to get my citizenship in Croatia I'm trying to be a person who wants to be a societal person wants to coincide or get along with society and at the same time especially growing up American you do get it into your mind that if you don't like the way things are you can change them and the moment you decide to change things you become the conflict okay and why do we want to change things usually because of our morals and then we have to fight the ethics of society what is that expectation of behavior so I want to go over today kind of this idea of when you're viewing my content, remember that I am trying my hardest to say, if you are that person who's felt alienated and you don't fit into the greater like society, not only can you fit in, but you can also still be authentically yourself, but it's not going to look the way you think it's going to look. When I say you're going to be authentically yourself, it doesn't mean on YouTube because I'm certainly not fully authentic because when I am, I hurt your feelings. So I know society doesn't want authenticity. They want information they can digest. So when I'm saying I'm going to teach you how to be authentically yourself, it certainly isn't in public. It certainly isn't in society. I'm going to teach you the differences if you want to learn between being authentically yourself in private and in your own life, having that relationship with the self and being a good citizen all the same. And now, okay, what I want to do is I want to go over some of the comments I got this weekend, right? Because one of the things I've noticed is that people, you know, when they agree with you, they really, man, they praise you, they love you. When they disagree with you, man, they really are disappointed. And they throw around really heavy words about like, I can't believe you had no empathy. And it's like very heavy language. Now, I will say the reason I titled this live stream disagree instead of like hate comments is because on the two last videos I posted, even though I got heavy disagreement, none of them felt like hate comments. And I want to say that out loud because I know in the past when I've dealt with certain people's communities, it's so clear they're hate comments. But I want to say that I appreciate the disagreements and the criticisms I've received. And though I disagree from a moral perspective, I would love to have the conversation all the same. Right? So I'm very excited to have the conversation. And I want to say thank you for all of the passionate replies I got in the messages because it helped me kind of get ready for this live stream. Right? I'm a very big commenter. I probably should slow it down. Honestly, it's a lot of emotional labor, but... I really, really did appreciate so much of the disagreement because it was really well expressed. And um, I still, though, even though it was well expressed, want to explain what it's like to be a content creator and to get the feedback from an invisible person. Because one of the things that I saw consistently was one, not understanding me and then blaming me because you didn't understand me, which is fair. Because you say there's an X and you, the general you, says there's an, an expectation of what language means that's universal, which, by the way, no data shows, which is why we're still arguing what love means, right? We still, to this day, have to argue about what love means because we do not have a universal language for love. So this narrative that people have is Brittany is the anomaly. Brittany isn't using words like the rest of us, is in of itself kind of misinformation, because no one uses words universally, which is why when the Bible was translated or books are translated, there is like a lacking in translation because we don't have the same words in every language. And even when one idea is 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 said in a different language, when, you know, translated to, into English is lacking the sustenance, the sustenance, the like em emphasis on like how important a word might mean. And it's translated almost like lukewarm. So again, I don't want to speak black and white, but I know my tonality is what makes people sometimes feel uncomfortable, which is why I always say you don't want authenticity. You want digestibility. And I can only be so digest digestible, but I'm going to try really hard to be digestible today. But this is what I mean to say. I want us to be self-aware that when we say we want people to be authentic, we're kind of lying to ourselves. What we're really saying is we want people to say things in ways that we understand so we don't feel alienated, we don't feel attacked, and we feel like we understand what's going on. And that is really difficult as a content creator to try to guess who's watching, to try to translate to all these different cultures. And on top of that, I don't know what you've read. I don't know what information you have. I don't know if you know this about language. So when I say something, it might sound like Brittany's saying something that's just so untrue. When I'm just saying something that is 
a part of my perception. You can disagree with it though, which is why again, I welcome those disagreements, right? Okay, we, Megan, you wanna start with your comments from chat right now and then we can go to the YouTube comments. Cause right now, Megan, you're like passionately posting and you, I love the language you used. You said, I felt like you invalidated her lived experience single. You tell her she has to be happy to be single cause you were, but also you've dated since high school, right? It felt like every point she made, you'd speak oppositional around it and your view always came out on top. So that's a really good perception if you're not, if it, it's a good surface level perception. The dilemma is that I'm never invalidating the lived experience. I'm saying that the why isn't accurately being described. So Brittany, all I care about is why something is happening. So why do you want to be in a relationship? I saw a comment that said, why is a woman who's married pretending like she doesn't know why people want to be married? because I don't want to objectify you and assume you want to get married for the same reason I want to get married. So why do you want to get married? And then in the comment sections for people to say, come on, Brittany, you know why people want to get married. Do I know that? Why do you, I don't know that. Why would I know why you want to get married? So when people say I'm single and I sound like I'm invalidating them, what I'm saying is I don't, be, I don't think you're accurately pinpointing why you want to get married. So when that lady, we were reviewing that very nice lady, okay, she said, I want to get married because I have all this love to give. That's not the reason to get married. That's not a good why, because it doesn't actually encompass the consent of the other person, the individuality of that other person. It's all about you. Marriage is not a selfish act. I mean, it is a selfish act because everything is inherently selfish, according to Rand, right? But you're not actually explaining why you want to get married. So when you say, I want to get married because I have all this love to give, you're not actually acknowledging the consent of the other person. Here, I'm going to pause my music. It's a little distracting for me right now. So you're not actually acknowledging the consent of the other person. You're saying, I want to get married because I have this love. It's all I, 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 I. Where does that other person play a role in your desire to get married? I want to get married because I'm lonely. I want to get married so I have someone to come home to. I want to get married so I can do the chores with somebody. I want to get married. I want to get married. I want to get, but I'm not hearing why. And if that's your why, I mean, that's what I would call settling. I would say if you want to get married so you have someone to do the dishes with, like I don't, I think marriage is, that's a decision. You know, you could just hire a maid. You could hire house cleaning or you could, ask your mom to come over, or you could just do your own dishes. So I don't think that's a good reason to be like, I want to get married so somebody helps me with the chores. That's a practical reason. And I think practicality could be a good reason if you're willing to also say out loud that you settled. So you're looking at another consciousness on the planet and you're saying, will you do life with me so someone can help me with the dishes? Right? So I'm saying, why do you want to get married? It's not that I'm criticizing her for being single, I'm saying, are you really single for the reasons you know why you're single, right? Do you really want to get married for the reasons you know? Introspection is asking yourself why, 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 why do I want to do this? Now, some people will say, Brittany, everyone wants to get married. That's not true. That is absolutely not true. So if you think that, you've already decided that everyone wants to be like you. And I'm saying, I don't assume people want to be like me. But I don't, I also am learning that people don't know why they want to do anything they do. You said, I felt like you invalidated her life. You tell her she has to be happy single because you were, but you've also dated in high school since high school. Now, okay, I did date in high school. My parents weren't, I wasn't allowed to date. I was homeschooled. I asked people out. So remember, I'm also not the girl that waits for people to ask me out, right? I'm the girl who asks people out. And usually what I find is people are afraid of rejection, but I'm not afraid of rejection, even though I have borderline and abandonment issues. I'm afraid of being misunderstood to the point where people want to hurt me, right? Because that's what's scary growing up as a gay kid in a conservative home is that I'm going to be so misunderstood. I'm going to be like stoned to death or killed or rejected from society because I'm gay, right? So that's, that's my fear of abandonment. My borderline is rooted in my gayness, at least of my therapist, and I think so, right? So when we're having these conversations and I'm thinking about rejection, I'm never thinking about somebody telling me no because that's consent-based. So when I, I joked about dating in high school and I was like, all the boys wanted me, I was a 14-year-old girl. I was a little kid, bro. 
So in my head, I'm thinking it's a cute joke. I was homeschooled. I did it in public school, but like with a homeschooler and another girl who was so introverted and geeky, like we're just little kids. We don't know what we're doing. We're not having sex. We're not doing anything like extreme we're like pecking on the lips at most we're holding hands we're secretly gay in a conservative town where nobody knows we're gay like we're just you know it's such a different innocent relation it doesn't mean anything to me in terms of growing up but of course it gave me tools and lessons but I think those tools and lessons are just as valuable as not dating so many people in my life never dated never had a relationship and still found the love of their life later in life but that was based off their morals and values So when I say, why do you want to get married? And people say, again, the comments were like, Brittany's being so obtuse. Brittany's playing dumb. I'm trying to let you tell me your story. I'm literally trying to say, tell me why. But then I'm going to ask you why again. And then I'm going to ask you why again. And that's why introspection is so exhausting because you have to keep asking yourself why until you run out of whys. Uh, Just spoiler, you're never really going to run out of whys. You know what I mean? Megan says, thank you for continuing the conversation. It means a lot, honestly. I mean, I, I, this is my joy. Being curious and inquisitive and wanting to hear, hear people's perspectives. So I just like, I want to know why too. K.O. says, what is a good answer to why do you want to get married? Just curious. Well, it's not up to me what the good answer is. But the honest answer is what I'm looking for. Right. And then the answer that makes sense with your values. So it's subjective. I don't believe in moral objectivity. I think we're animals evolved on a planet. I think we're biological creatures. I think we're experiencing the world as like any other animal species experiencing it. It's just through our perception. So it's not up to Brittany what a good reason for marriage is. Now, if you asked me through my morals, I would say you want to have a healthy connection with somebody that you've either been transparent and communicative with that you're settling in a healthy way. Or you find the love of your life and you do life with them. So obviously in my case, I feel like I refused to settle because I would have been very unhappy and I waited and I was willing to wait forever. And then I was indifferent if it happened or not to finding one of my very compatible people on the planet. You could call it a soulmate. If you want to get a little metaphysical, you could call it a very compatible partner in terms of the data. But I wanted to wait until I found one of those people. And I think every person on the planet has like millions of possible compatible partners, right? So I waited until I found that person. We found each other. We talked it out. We negotiated. We courted. And then we came to the conclusion we would like to do life together. So it was a very, yes, I'm attracted to you. Yes, I'm emotionally invested in you. But also I'm going to make a rational and reasonable decision in terms of like a a, um, cohabitation. And we're going to form this union. And we've decided to do life together, right? So it was very like emotional and what I call the resume, like logical, right? Silver with the super chat says, hey, Brittany, thanks for the live streams and videos. They've really helped my mental and have given me a different perspective on life. Keep doing you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And that's the goal. My goal, and I know I'm rough, and look, I'm happy to mask. I'm happy to be less Brittany. Just a little bit. Not too much, girl, okay? But like a little bit so you guys can hear me better. It takes a lot more spoons for me to have to like think very, like mask very much, but I can do it. And that is what you're asking me to do. Because again, that's what society needs each other to do to make it function. But what I'm going to, what I want to show you is like, if you find yourself exhausted from having to mask in society constantly, how do you form that bubble at home that when you get home, you can, and how do you find the right people to do that with? Now, for me, the only person I can fully unmask around is my partner, myself, and my cat, right? That's the only time I feel completely safe because, again, I don't have to do all these caveats. I don't have to use all my energy to explain things a thousand times over. I don't have to say, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to say this. I don't have to say this over and over and over again. Now, of course, at my job, I do because I'm interacting with different people from all over the world with different thought processes. And then, of course, I do because I'm socializing because people have different perceptions of reality, right? So there's always going to be a part of masking that comes in, even on my own channel, even with my own audience, which I fully accept as reality. And that is a tool I want to give you. Even when you say, I want authentic, like people to be authentic, ask yourself if you really, really do, because it's asking a lot of people and it's asking a lot of yourself to do that emotional labor, to handle people's authenticity, right? And I mean like fully themselves unmasked, okay? Should I start with... The girl or the boy? 
Let's start with the boy because I think this one will be one. It's a little bit more boring. So we'll start with the boring one and then we'll go on because I did a I did a another video on the Katie bugs and George not found controversy. And again, if you're new to my content, I'm never really talking about the people I'm talking about. I'm always using their life as an example to have a bigger conversation. Right. So. I think a lot of content creators I watch do this. I watch a ton of podcasts, a ton of like people who watch other people's lives and comment on it as a way to have a bigger conversation about their life. So I'm never really talking about the people I'm reviewing. I'm just using it as an example. But I said something that really upset a few people. Now, I was informed by one of the people in the community that the Minecraft community explicitly has a lot of trauma around false allegations. So they watched like two minutes of my stream and had a panic because of something I said. And I want to talk about that because, again, your perception is going to make things better or worse for you, right? If you don't understand that people aren't speaking universally, language is not universal, and neither is expectation of what words mean. So check this out. This is the beginning clip of my video. This is a, you know, coming up. This is like a preview. Check this out. It only matters to the people being impacted. Acted. And that's Katie and George. And if they decide this doesn't matter and they're going to move on for it from it, the internet needs to move on. But the internet won't because it's not about Katie and George. They're going to project themselves onto the situation and they're going to bully both of these people into not fixing the situation because it feels better for their egos. And I know, you know what pisses me off the most is how many content creators have reviewed this and not even reviewed as many logs as we've reviewed. And there's still stuff I'm missing. But like literally, I will watch them do a live stream and they're like, oh, I haven't watched any of these videos on my own. I'm like, oh. so they don't even know what George has said. They're just assuming, they're like fighting for George on his behalf when they don't even listen to what he says. I think that Katie deserves all the support that you See, can... George and Dream both said, be nice to Katie. It is a terrible situation. It is a terrible thing, the pain that she feels. He sounds like a fucking second grader who got in trouble in class. What is this? It is- That's what I- It's a terrible thing. Pain is not good. Oh, uh, gold star. Interesting. So the 20 year old is not listening to any of the people involved and has decided he knows better than anyone that was involved. Ugh, people are so young. So the guy who wasn't involved is listening to three people who are directly involved in some capacity and is going, no, I know better than everybody involved. I don't even know what to do with that. You know what I mean? Like, we really don't want to listen to victims, do we? Whether they're men or women, huh? Over the last year, we also saw one of the biggest. Okay, so that was like the preview clip. It's pretty long. And it's a very long video, to be fair. And then here's the beginning of the video, and this is what freaked people out. YouTubers on the platform dream get falsely accused of life ruining allegations. And True. Really so he starts off his video with being concerned about dream, concerned about false allegations, concerned about the men. He calls them life shattering, life changing, life ruining. Those are pretty big words, right? Destroyed his well, career. life ruining allegations like, God, can I say something? Before that Britney goes, this Britney wants to say, what does life ruining mean to you? Because that is a very specific thing in my head. So here's a perception challenge, okay? When I hear life ruining, life shattering, I'm imagining a very specific thing, which we all are. So what are you imagining? And then what number, what data do we have to know what that means, right? So what do we know? And then we know data is skewed because people don't know themselves enough to report the right things. And the same people who could be reviewed 20 years like into the past and then 20 years into the future could have different perceptions of a memory because memories shift over time, right? So when you hear life ruining, false accusations are life ruining, what do you guys imagine that is? I would like your input. For me, I imagine something like going to prison for 30 to 40 years for something you didn't do, right? Which I would consider life ruining because it's impacting your ability to function within society. So for Brittany, life ruining means an inability to function within society or to regain functionality within society. So I saw someone leave a comment on my Caleb Hammer video, outrageous comment in my opinion, said if you're on government assistance or food stamps, your right to vote should be revoked. And in my mind, I don't even understand living in such a cruel reality where you would take away people's civil rights because they need assistance from the government. Now, I don't know if this is a troll or if they mean it, right? But who knows? Lexi says it life ruining means an event permanently separates you from your joy. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, very philosophy. Very good. Okay. I like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. So check this out. 
video and continues. And I, I, I want okay, so this is the video continuing. I'm gonna say this with like the most, uh, the most respect. Men getting accused is hardly ever a consequence to their life. Okay, so then I say men getting accused is hardly ever a consequence to their life. Now, and then I show the presidents. Now, this part could have been communicated a lot clearer. But the point I was making is that even when people have been like proven to do something, we don't believe victims and we sex shame them, right? Monica Lewinsky was an intern who was taken advantage of by a president and people sex shame this woman for most of her life, right? Because in their head, she was a slut who wanted it, right? Even though reality is like he was the president and she was an intern. It was inappropriate regardless if it was two consenting adults. It was life, it was like, it was inappropriate, right? And it was life changing for her and not for the president. Realistically, him getting impeached hardly impacted his life in a real way. I mean, maybe in terms of shame, but Bill Clinton is one of the most powerful people in the world and he's doing fine. Trump, who's been accused time and time again, managed to get votes and will probably win this next term election, which is insane, but here we are. And then an average person, an average guy, just anecdotally, are the men in your life getting ostracized from the family gatherings after people come out with their stories or are the women? Because usually it's the women who are told, keep it quiet, don't mention it, don't talk about what happened, right? And then more than that, false accusation in terms of data is very minuscule. Almost none of the cases are false accusations. And then on top of that, like life ruining is a very specific thing. Individuals have life ruining circumstances. I was falsely accused, went to court. It was a whole thing. It was horrible. I hated it. It wasn't life ruining for me because I had resources and the education and the support system to do better. But it was the, one of the biggest struggles of my life. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. It was one of the most difficult things to ever go through in my life. But it wasn't life ruining because I could still function within society. And so again, when we talk about what is life ruining, it's a very specific thing. So people were pretty upset about this, but let's continue. It will have consequences in, see, it will have consequences. The society that actually holds you accountable, but exactly. And now I'm not talking about just false accusations. I'm talking about accusations at all. Generally speaking, men aren't held accountable. That's why we needed the whole Me Too movement, which of course is gonna. So now I realize, and this is past Britney, this is current Britney talking to past Britney. I know a lot of people when I they watch me do Inception, Britney, watch two of like watch me in the past, they get confused because they're just listening. So if you're just listening, I'm pausing the video and commenting. My brain does a thing that I realize some people's doesn't, which is like I can hop from subject to subject and understand that I've changed context without the need to say it out loud. But I understand not all people's brains can follow that conversation. So even now I'm verbally telling you I've paused the video because I got complaints from people saying, I didn't know you had paused the video because your voice sounds the same in both videos. It's like, no matter what you do, someone in the world isn't going to understand you, which is my point. We all live in bubbles and we have perceptions. And no matter what you do, it's going to be confusing to people. So I'm going to unpause the video now. I have issues because now we have to redefine what suck our essay is. There are little to zero consequences, depending on your culture and background, for you being accused of something. Keep in mind, Trump has been accused time and time again, and he's president of the United States. Or Now, some people were upset with this. I'm pausing the video because they said you used examples of people in power. So obviously, I understand it's not a perfect example, but I'm trying to make a larger point, which I understand is confusing for people. But when you're confused, ask yourself if it's you being confused and not the person communicating. Because when I listen to people talk, I try to jump into their bubble and try to figure out what they're saying from their perspective. I really do, as much as you like might not think I am. I'm also giving you the chat an opportunity to ask yourselves, okay, am I also perceiving this a particular way, right? So, okay, or was. Balto says, but if you're a regular guy who is falsely accused, your life can be ruined. Some, absolutely men's lives will be ruined. I'll see how I said this? Some men's lives will be ruined. I agree, both things are true at the same time. People got very emotionally upset with me for this take because they thought I was saying it never impacts people. But I didn't say that. I literally just showed you I didn't say that. But because you're emotionally triggered, now not medically triggered, but emotionally upset, your brain will hear something I didn't say, right? False accusations, I think, are worse for the individual experiencing them because it feels like you're being gaslit. And I will say that is incredibly difficult. It is incredibly difficult. See how I'm I see how I'm acknowledging both parties. I'm allowing everyone to feel their pain, but the chat couldn't do it. 
the commenters, they couldn't hear me no matter how clear I was being. And no matter how clear I'll ever be, people won't hear me. So what is that? That is perception, right? I'm pressing on pause. As somebody who's been like falsely accused or women have said things about me, Mm -hmm. I'm like, what are you talking about? It feels horrible. It feels like you're being gaslit. See how I'm personally putting myself in it. I'm letting you know I've also gone through it. Like I'm literally doing all of the proper steps in terms of communication to make sure everybody knows not only do I identify and I've been there, not only have I gone to court to deal with it, not only have I learned what ostracization is as a child or as a gay kid, not only do I know all these things, but I also know like reality, the data, the numbers show you'll probably be okay. But when you're not okay, it can be life ending. But also, what is life ending? What is life ruining? So of course, in this context, right? Of course, in this context, people are thinking about George Not Found, who none of us know personally, right? But if you look at George Not Found, okay, false accusations are what? They're lies. And lies are really bad because it's, it's a slanderous sort of situation. But of course, we don't know that Katie was lying. So we can't even have the real conversation. Like, was Katie lying or not lying? We don't know. But people had decided Katie lied. And because Katie lied, George should sue her. I don't know. You can decide. I don't, you know, I don't believe in an eye for an eye. So you do you. But I think people are sick, right? So again, perception is going to change your relationship with the content you're watching. If you're upset, you should watch it a third, fourth, fifth time until you understand that perspective and then still be upset if you'd like because of your morals, right? So was George's life ruined from Katie's coming out with her story? I would argue his life wasn't ruined. His life became a very difficult struggle. So now we're talking about semantics. Okay, well, how does Brittany define this word? How do other people define this word? How do you define it? We all define it differently. But this narrative people have of you are objectively wrong. This is universal. You are not speaking from a place of universality or universal. You are speaking from a place of perception of the universal, which is not objective. And so your perception will change your interaction with the content and with the person you're viewing, which is why we continue again, the ethics of society against the morals of the person. You will have to deal with that conflict arising because you can't agree on terms, semantics, or on what reality is, perception. And then it will create the deviation and sort of like cohesiveness, okay? So no matter what I do, right? I'll always be misunderstood. So now my work, the reason I do the work that I do now is to teach the individual that society will always misunderstand them until it doesn't, but then it will again because times change and communication changes. The reason people feel so upset about the way that language changes over time is because they no longer feel like they can speak and be understood. They no longer feel safe. They no longer feel like there's a place for them in the world. We all feel that at some time in our life. Every single person on this planet feels that at some time in their life. The question is, and this is the introspection philosophy part, do you understand that this is a universal experience and you are not special? That's a very big realization. Do you understand that the horrible thing happening to you is not special? that there are millions and millions of people on the planet going through the same exact thing you're going through? Do you understand that it is a form of entitlement and narcissism, not medically, but just in terms of what that means, like narcissism, high ego, um, entitlement, expectation of me, right? Expectation of the I, the ego. So we're always talking about the ego. When you think this is, I am going through the hardest thing. It is just happening to me. Nobody knows my pain like I know my pain. Yes, nobody knows your pain like you know your pain, but you know who's the greatest deceiver in your life? You, you, sis, you. And at the same time, who knows you better than anyone? You. And that's what's so scary. You know yourself better than anybody knows yourself and you are your greatest liar. Nobody lies to yourself like you do because you're the one having that internal dialogue. Assuming you have an internal dialogue. Some people report not having an internal dialogue. So imagine that. Imagine we're saying everybody knows everyone has an internal dialogue. Not according to data. What about amphantasia? The ability to form images in your mind. What about any, everyone is having a different experience. This is like autism, ADHD, neurodivergency in general. You say to a child, that's normal. Everybody goes through that. Is that true? Is that true? Does everybody go through that? This narrative that I'm the normal one is a universal experience as well. And then at the same time, while you feel like the normal one, at some time in your life, you will feel so alienated. 
you will feel like nobody is like me. No one's been lonely like I've been lonely. No one's been hurt like I've been hurt. No one's understood pain the way I felt it. Until you realize and you zoom out of your ego that you are a human being on a planet experiencing, right, life, whatever that means, you, like many other organisms, are experiencing a universal thing. But because we're categorizable, not everybody will be graped, right? But grape isn't the only kind of pain you can feel. Not everybody will be an amputee. Not every amputee will have a tragedy associated with their amputation. Not every grape victim will feel exactly the same way about their grape. Not every person will universally feel the same way about anything. And so again, when we're having these conversations and you're, you notice, you know, you're having an angry response, right? You're having this like, I can't believe it. I can't believe someone said this. First, you have to fully accept that everybody has said something on the planet. I mean, I don't know if you've heard about the Holocaust, but the atrocities human beings are willing to pursue and you think it's impossible that someone said something? I think it's crazy that people did things. Saying things is easy. Doing things is hard. The fact that we've had genocide after genocide after genocide in the world that is much more like, whoa. I mean, it makes sense from a human species perspective, like zooming out and understanding like we're just like little animals, like fighting for territory. But I think that's much more like, whoa. But yet people are more shocked about what people say. I'm less shocked about what people say. I'm more interested in what people do. People say things wrong all the time. People communicate wrong all the time. That's why I don't have quite an attachment to words. Like I, I don't really attach much meaning to words even though sometimes I do, depending on the context, of course, what I'm really attaching to is your reaction to it. Why'd you write the comment? Why'd you express yourself that way? Why did you feel this is what was being said? Why did you assume malice from me, right, to defend somebody else? Why do you have to push somebody down to uplift somebody else? I want to know why without the judgment, right? I want to know why of everything. That's my personal interest in life. It's like, oh, why does that do that? Why do you do that? And without judgment, I don't believe in condemning people. I don't think you can condemn people. I think the ego telling you you can condemn people is probably bad. I don't want to condemn you. I just want to say, hey, I've noticed this pattern of behavior in you and I don't like it. And when people say you don't like it, why not? Well, I could explain, right? But then I'm not explaining something in which I'm supposed, I'm not, when Brittany makes a judgment, when I make a judgment of people, I'm not then saying fire them or keep them away from people. I'm saying meet them where they're at. So some people are better off not around certain people and some people are better off not in communities and some people are better off. It just depends on the person. I want to I want to help the person and the victims. I kind of believe that the best way to be is sort of like these sort of mythical beings in religion or in philosophy, which is to understand the enemy with as much compassion as you're understanding an ally. And then understanding within the bubble construct how those people are impacting. I'm reading Marcus Aurelius's um, meditations. And the irony of it is, first of all, everything that's been said 2000 years ago is being said now. We still haven't problem solved those things in a, in a mass way because new babies are being born every day. But he said something funny, which was like, treat your woman well, um, treat her with dignity. Do not give in to the temptations of a woman's body or of sex or something to that effect, right? I'm not quoting it perfectly. Also, when I was a kid, I hung out with my dad's mistress. And I'm like, we preach these virtuous actions. Be good. Do not, te do not give in to temptation. But also, my dad brought his mistress around. And that is the irony when we talk about virtue. I don't know if you grew up in a, in a background with virtue as a, as a topic at the table, but virtues, a code of conduct, a code of honor, all of this, all of this particular type of conversation is something that I grew up having with my parents, with my siblings. I have nine siblings, right? So when we talk about virtues, we're talking about something as being sort of an ideal of man while acknowledging the temptations of being a man. And I don't mean man as in gendered, I mean man as in human. So again, when I'm reading these comments and they're like, I can't believe Brittany said this. I can't believe she did this. And I can't believe she's playing dumb. The irony is like, I'm trying to give you a chance to explain yourself. When I say, what do you think a genocide is? I'm not saying I don't know what it is. I'm saying I want to know what you think it is. When I say, why do you think she wants to get married? I'm not saying that I don't have a theory of why she wants to get married or why I want to get married. I'm saying, why do you? I'm giving you an opportunity to actually be heard. But the irony is when you give people that opportunity, they don't want it. They don't want to be heard because they feel like you're playing dumb with them 
because they don't know what it's like to have a person really ask them a question and want to hear the answer. Now, of course, if we start debating about like what is ethical and what is good and what is good for society, well, obviously at some point it's going to feel personal, right? Like at some point it's going to feel like an attack, but it might not even be one. It might just feel that way, but it might be one as well. Some people are malicious and they will attack you. But also people are so traumatized and so in their own bubble, it's really, really, really difficult to know which perspective, like which perception or which understanding or which way they're communicating to come to the right conclusion. I am never trying to be mean. But I've noticed in myself that if I'm trying to be very kind and I'm doing a lot of emotional labor for you and you want me to be kinder to yourself than you are being, or if you want me to do more emotional labor for you than you're doing for yourself, I will absolutely become mean. I know this is a personality trait of mine, that if you expect me to do more, more emotional labor for you than you are willing to do for yourself, I will abandon you. Because I think it's incredibly just unconsensual the way people expect you to do more emotional labor for them than they're willing to do for themselves. Now, I will make exceptions for people, but no, most of the time I will not, right? So this is kind of the, the, the distinction, the, the, the great separator that I'm noticing is people are asking you to do more emotional labor for them than they're willing to do for themselves. They're, they want you to treat them better than they treat themselves. And I think that's asking too much of people. I, I think it's borderline cruel. Now, I think people can be exceptional and can do that anyways. And I think that's beautiful. But I do think it's a big ask to ask from society, right? Discord said, I was so drained by the end of that 40-year-old virgin. She is not in her joy and doesn't seem like she wants to get better complaining versus venting. We've talked about this before, right? Complaining is when you talk about how hard your life is and you don't take any of the advice or do anything to make it better but you pretend to do things to make it better. Venting is when you're saying, God, I'm so stressed, but thank you for listening to me. I'll get it done. Venting, I vent to my husband all the time, but I do not complain and I do not expect him to do it for me, but I vent and then I go and I do my work, right? Brianne says, that sounds like a healthy boundary, Brittany. I'm a big fan of boundaries. And again, boundaries are not ultimatums and they are not threats. These are three different categories. A boundary is for you. Hey, you don't have to change the way you're acting, but I need to remove myself from the situation. An ultimatum is you need to change the way you're acting or I'm going to leave. And a threat is if you don't change how you're acting, I'm going to hurt you. I do not believe in ultimatums and I do not threaten people. I only put down boundaries. I only put down boundaries because that's the only thing I can control is me. The only thing I can control is me. I cannot control other people. Farah, stop it, Farah. You give very much therapist. You talk, to, you talk to us how my therapist talks to me. See, I struggle with this because people do think I'm a therapist and I'm not. And I don't know why people think that about me. I think it's probably just my category of person and also my special interest is why people do things. And I don't think I could ever handle being a therapist because I just don't think it would be fulfilling for me. But I think of myself more as a philosopher, which people do think philosophy is therapy. But I think they're very, very, very different categories. And I do struggle being perceived as a therapist because it's not what I mean to do. And I don't know, for me, therapy wasn't like this. I mean, some parts of therapy were, but for me, therapy wasn't like this. But I guess it could have been to some people's perception. But I think therapy is very specific. It's mental health. And I feel like I'm talking about, you know, understanding the self, which coincides with mental health, but it also coincides with like physical health. But no one ever calls me like, a, a physical therapist or no one ever calls me like a coach. You know, nobody ever says like, Brittany, can we go to the gym together? But I think they're they, it's interesting being perceived that way. Honestly, love that. Lexi says, I'm so proud of my little sister because every time she vents to me about something, she figures out a solution within like a week, much stronger and smarter than I was at 20. Such a queen. That's the only, we have so much hope that the people that are younger for us, uh, younger than us will problem solve faster than us. You know what I mean? Brittany Discord says, I don't think you're very good at taking criticism. Have you considered that telling someone their criticism is just their perspective and them getting internet triggered is a way of dismissing them without really addressing what they're saying? To be very honest, you've been coming across pretty arrogantly. Well, tell me how to do it better if you think I can. Again, I don't want to be, because this is the dilemma, right? If you grew up in a religious home and you're gay and people say, you're not good at taking criticism because all I'm trying to say is being gay makes you a bad person. 
I want to make sure that we can agree to disagree. Or if they say you're vegan and or you're not vegan and because you're not vegan, you're slaughtering innocent animals. It's like, okay, can we have this conversation in a different way? Because the criticism, I'm willing to hear criticism, but I think we're disagreeing. So how do we disagree without, because I'm happy to take the criticism, but I do disagree. So how can we agree to disagree without it seeming like I'm not listening? Because again, I don't, it's not that I'm not listening. I just literally disagree, right? So how can, help me do that, right? Let's do it together then. How do I agree to disagree? Because I think that is where the confusion is. And that's kind of coincides with my theory on bubbles and it kind of coincides on cultural differences. And it kind of coincides with everything else. How do you stay confident in your values without people assuming you're disregarding the criticism? And then what is the criticism in the first place? The criticism is usually, I don't like the way you made me feel. Hey, fair. What does that mean? Do I have to change who I am in order to make you feel comfortable? What does that mean? Where's the limitation to that? So expand with me. I'm here right now. I'm open. I'm talking to you right now. What am I being arrogant about? What is the criticism you want me to take? So you've left me a comment, great comment, but you haven't addressed the criticism. So what is the criticism you would like me to take? And why do you think I'm being arrogant? And would you prefer that I masked harder or that I spoke less? Would you prefer, what would be your preference in reaction? So again, I would love to hear that. Megan says it's helpful to clear about what situation to use an I statement, you statement, and we statement. There's also a balance with questioning and believing without asking for more information. Mm -hmm. Webkin says, could it be hard because the disagreement from your crit critics seems to be about impact versus intention? I'm not sure. I mean, I definitely put a lot more emphasis on intention and some emphasis on impact, obviously, right? I try to balance the two, but I'm hearing a lot of you make me uncomfortable, but I'm not sure what the criticism is because we're all gonna make each other uncomfortable, right? Like religious people feel uncomfortable with gay people, feminists feel uncomfortable with manosphere people. So like, what is the uncomfortability? Can anyone actually like, you know what I mean? Megan says, we disagree or we agree to disagree that I am, oh, hold on, I can't see your full comment because YouTube has this emoji thing. We agree to disagree with the I and you statements. It's honestly so important for sure. So when I say you, I mean a general you like humanity, usually, especially if I'm reviewing someone and then I statements, I, I'm always speaking for me. So can you guys point to a moment where you'd want more clarification and especially discord? Cause this is a very good comment. I just don't know what it means. I'm not saying it like, oh, internet triggered is a bad thing. I'm saying you're perceiving me as saying something I didn't say. And on top of that, you're perceiving an arrogance out of me that is coming from a place of confidence in my values. So you can call it arrogance. I'm okay with that. But what does it mean? Can I get an expansion on that? Can, can somebody, and look, if Discord wants to call in, by the way, I will take callers as well. So if my Discord wants to call in here, I'll jump into my waiting room. You guys can jump into the waiting room. I'll bring you in and you can call in if, if you do better vi uh, verbally, you know. Um, Spooky says intention, impact, integrity. Mm, what in, okay, I'm not sure. See, I, I need an, uh, what is that? I think I understand, but can I get an expansion on that? So I'm waiting. I'm just waiting for comments now, guys. I'm not getting anything yet. I know I think I'm 30 seconds delayed. So when somebody is ready to explain to me what they mean, I would love to hear it. Bara says, I wish some of the first dates the 40-year-old woman went on would make videos. Not to bash or anything, but to see their perspectives maybe. I wonder if she's ever had an in-depth conversation. Well, I honestly think my theory about her was, see, I think it was pretty correct, but it could be wrong. This, And again, not her, the consciousness, but the category she's in. I think a lot of people are looking for their like very high compatibility partner and they don't want to settle but they're also not sure what that means. And I think a lot of people are used to settling, like you're supposed to lie on a first date and talk yourself up and pretend you're different than you are until the person likes you. And then you're supposed to unveil, like unveil yourself to them and aha, love me anyways, even though I have faults. And then the person does, and then you have a toxic relationship. So I feel like, I feel like she's just dated a lot of people that weren't her soulmate or like weren't her high compatibility partner, right? I think that's probably the issue more than anything. And I think that's probably the issue for more people. It's like you have to accept that you might not run into that person. And it's probably better to stay single than to end up with the wrong person. But lots of people choose to end up with the settling partner. And I think as long as it's consensual, it's probably okay, you know? Brooke says, oh, when you don't want to leave Britney's stream, but you have schoolwork to do. Oh, good luck, Brooke. You got this, you know? Um, I'm not seeing any new comments from anyone, guys. So I don't know if I'm missing them or something. 
Uh, it's been like seven minutes since I got that question on Discord and I haven't gotten a follow up. So I see, I feel like I get criticism, but I don't, and it's not explained to me. So then I get confused, <laughs> right? I, I, I don't know what to do with this. I feel like I got a pretty good comment, but I'm not getting a follow up. So I'll give them a few minutes. Maybe they don't, they haven't put their thoughts together. Megan says, I really enjoy you and the conversations you host, by the way. Don't want to come off as rude. Nobody's coming off as rude. Everyone's doing great. I'm good. I'm used to this. I think this is what I want to do for a living is to explain to people why miscommunication happens and how not to take things personally like about you. But this also coincides with my theory about entitlement, which is like people feel entitled to love, entitled to goodness, entitled to existing, entitled to a lot of things that I don't think coincides with the scientific perception of we're evolved animals on a planet. So to feel entitled to these things is to insinuate that the bear is also entitled. And I think that's really coming from ego. And I don't feel that entitlement personally, but I'm happy to exist all the same. But I don't feel an entitlement to love. I feel like I get what I've put into my life. And then sometimes humans, regardless of that, we interact and there's conflict, right? So it's about radically accepting from a philosophy perspective, that Buddhist perspective, letting go of the attachment of assuming I'm entitled to something. I think that's what's kind of the key from my philosophy perspective, right? That's probably the deviation between my thoughts and other people's, but it's very common in certain philosophy circles. So Tiffany says, I respect that you are sure of your opinions and perspective while still being willing to hear ours. I don't really think it's bad to come off as confident. Why should I listen to you if you weren't? Well, I, again, I don't, I agree with that premise. And I think as a deeply confident person who's dealt with a lot of insecurity and I was never a perfect person, and I never will, will be a perfect person. I tend to be, it's funny, I tend to be very lenient on people and very judgmental at the same time. So half the criticism I get is she's too lenient on people. She gives too many people grace. And the other criticism is she's too judgmental. So I think that that should tell me that I'm doing fairly well, but also that that different people are perceiving me differently. And so how do I bridge that gap of understanding, right? How can I bridge that gap of misunderstanding? Should I just, I really think masking more is probably the answer, which again coincides with my theory that people don't want authenticity. They want a, a person that's packaged in a way that's consumable, which I think is really, really reasonable. And I think it does reflect data. So I can't even take it personal because it's not about me. It's about people and the data, right? So it's the data, right? Cognitive says, maybe they mean that your worldview seems super fixed, perhaps because you know yourself so well, which can show up as condescending to others who don't share your worldview. Probably. Yeah, probably. Which is, yeah, I, I could see that definitely being the perspective. 12 says, in the Katie stream, you said something along the lines that essay is not an essay or it isn't as serious when the abuser doesn't have bad intentions. That statement seems very harmful and invalidating to me. I also later in that stream specified that the context can change if the predator is a PDF file as an example and perceives what they're doing as a good thing. So I think abuse can happen whether you intend it or not. And I think that matters. So I did also specify that clarification, but I'm not sure people heard the difference. So I think all things are true at once. I don't think people who in, who don't perceive it as essay or essaying people, but I don't, but I do think at the same time they can cause harm. So George didn't mean to essay Katie, but because essay occurred, whether he agrees with it or not, or did not occur, whether he agrees with it or not, the aftermath is the same. So Katie can still feel essayed without George intending to essay her. And I think the way you solve this problem is by making sure to like understand that these mistakes will happen consistently. And instead of persecuting George, let it go. Instead of persecuting Katie, let it go. And this is very difficult because now Katie's been impacted, whether George intended it or not. And so now we have to deal with that aftermath. And so I, I think I agree with you, but I agree that all things are true at once, that you cannot assume, like my parents didn't, didn't intend to hurt me growing up, but caused a lot of harm along the way, hence me forming personality, like a personality disorder, like a borderline personality disorder. But also in therapy, I learned to let go of holding my parents accountable because I can't hold them accountable for something they didn't intend to do, right? Which is actually a philosophy perspective of letting go of that attachment, okay? So I'm letting go of the attachment of assuming my parents would be perfect and accepting that my parents weren't. And then because people aren't perfect, how do we, how do we react within reason? I think asking people to be perfect is wrong. Now, of course, Regardless of your intentions, you cannot, with your good intentions, um, 
not if you negatively impact somebody, there is going to be a consequence to that. It may be that your kids don't talk to you. It might be that the government gets it comes in and intervenes. It might be that you are put in prison forever. So I'm not opposed to someone being accountable within the society standard or being accountable within their family standard. But I'm saying that I want to dissect the situation and come to the best outcome versus what we normally usually do out of reflex. So sometimes we'll have like a re like a ooh, this is what you did. So this is what you deserve. This is what you deserve. I don't think people deserve anything. I think if you want to punish people, that's probably the wrong way to go about things. No data shows that punishment works in the way of healing or better society. All it does is push down people's feelings and puts a band-aid on a problem that will probably happen again, which is why we um, have cycles of abuse continue, right? So I feel like when I'm listening to people talk, I am never saying, I am, I'm saying the thing that is harder to even comprehend, that everything is true and nothing is true. That's a much harder concept to comprehend than me just saying, yes, every person who ever hurt anybody is bad. That's, that's the answer most people go to. But I want to challenge you to think, what if it was more nuanced than that, you know? Beji says, have you watched Baby Reindeer? I feel like you'd have a lot to say about it. I don't know who that is. I don't know if that's a, I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Discord says, I might be able to help clarify, but I also want to think about the best way to put it. Your content has changed and that is hard for humans who are now needing to update their internal maps of Britney. And some are realizing they don't resonate with the new map. I think it's okay for that to happen. And ego makes feelings get hurt about it, which is normal, but also unnecessary. Yeah, I, well, you know what's, let me tell you, I don't know if you guys have heard me tell this story. So like last year, uh, somebody came to me and said, hey, you need to be more blunt about your opinions because it feels like you're afraid to say them. And I'm like, oh, I just thought it would be more nice if I was more like this way. But yeah, I will. I'll share my opinions. And then I shared my opinions. And the same person who told me to do that was like, whoa, not that opinion. And even they got offended because people per, like they project onto me because I tend to be lenient on people, sort of a she agrees with me. And then when people realize, like, I don't agree with most people. I just think people are doing people things. They take it personal. Like, Brittany doesn't agree with me. Well, I don't know why you thought I did if you listen to my values. If you know I believe in, like, transparency and honesty, why would I then believe in cheating? And why would I think it's tolerable or good, right? But, of course, if a person comes to me, and I've had callers over the years, friends over the years, who have been cheaters, of course I'm going to meet them with compassion and love. You know, I'm going to say I love you. People make mistakes. People also do horrible things on purpose. Let's decide which one you're doing and then let's get the help you need. That might also make them feel like Brittany approves of my cheating, but I don't approve of your cheating. I just, I approve of you going through the journey. And then if you ask me, what do I personally feel about it? You know, Phoenix says, I'm not sure how the older content was different. However, I definitely resonate with how Brit brings things across. Like I said, if like she said, if arrogance is confidence in her values, I wouldn't necessarily say it's bad. We all just have different values. Well, I reviewed content from 12 months ago and it's literally the same. So I'm assuming three years ago, because the content was quite different three years ago, I'm assuming people are saying that that content is different. But if you go back and watch my videos from a year ago, it's exactly the same now. I'm just a little bit more blunt. So the irony, of course, is everybody wants me to have the opinion they have, but when it feels like I'm anti their opinion, then it feels like they're being judged. But I genuinely don't care what you do with your lives. I'm just making content and I'm giving my opinion. But I, Brittany, I don't think you should be arrested. I don't think you should have problems happen. I don't think, like, unless you're doing something truly horrific, I think you're just a person on a journey. I have strong opinions about that journey based off my values, but I don't, like condemn people in my head you know I just think like people are doing their life bro and it's like not perfect but it's something and look I'm pretty traveled I've hung out with a lot of different families I mean I've been to a lot of people's homes and like people don't live like you think they live people live different and whatever you think you're doing that's normal someone is looking at you and thinking mm -mm. Mm -mm. no ma'am right Lexi says, I think the big issue is also people not wanting to understand that you're not just being a commentary channel and said you kind of used typical commentary style, commenter style content to explore philosophy. That's true too, right? Maiden says, I'm not convinced that what can be read as arrogance is actually arrogance. That's nuance to be held between confidence and arrogance and our experiences also color our interpretation. Yeah. Beauty says, I think you just summed up my whole life. Uh-oh. <laughs> is that good? 
Jonathan says bubbles are going to bubble. People want to hear your opinions being blunt when they agree with you. Otherwise, it will be arrogance. True. Jonathan, you also said you literally just said my comment as I typed it. Yeah, I think that's that's what I've learned this last year, that the same people that wanted me to be more blunt didn't realize I would be blunt about their choices. And so they were like, <gasps> and I was like, it's not you. I'm not commenting on you. I'm commenting on the people. So sometimes people will hear me say my life would be easier if conservatives didn't exist. And I've had conservative friends come to me and say, like, oh, do you think like your life would be easier if I didn't exist? And I was like, I didn't say that. They're like, yeah, but I'm a conservative. I was like, but I didn't say that. I didn't say my life would be easier if you didn't exist. I love you. I'm saying my life would be easier if the conservative philosophy didn't exist, which is just a fact. It's also a fact that my life would be easier if nobody existed. It's also true my life would be easier if I was a billionaire. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying anything about you. But the problem is, is like people personalize it in the same way we do as children. In the same way we personalize it as children. Do you know my therapist thinks that my borderline formed because as a child, my parents were very and are still very anti-LGBT, right? I internalized everything I heard about my parents. Gay people are going to jail. I don't know. Gay people should be in jail. Gay people should are going to hell. Gay people are probably PDF files. Gay people, trans people, they're incredibly sick. They're horrible to children. They're groomers. I heard that my whole life and internalized it. This little kid who was like, but I like girls, is liking girls bad? And then I'm like, oh my God. And so I pre-abandoned myself. I started my unaliving plan as like a nine-year-old because of what I was perceiving. Now, my parents were never talking about me. They didn't know they had a gay kid. Newsflash, they have three, but they didn't know they had gay kids. So in their head, they don't think people are gay necessarily. They think some people are born gay as a cross that God gives them to learn how to be celibate. And it's like a whole theory Catholics have. But more than that, my parents are the kind of parents that think other kids, pro other ki people's kids have problems, but not their kids. Right. So like the irony. So my parents didn't intend to give me an internalized like self-loathing complex that made me feel abandoned every time I inhaled oxygen. They didn't mean to do that. But I was internalizing it. And I think sometimes a lot of people have unhealed trauma. And so they'll watch a commentary channel and listen to them and think they're talking about them. But I don't know you. Like, you must know I don't know you. I don't know the people I'm commenting on. I don't know anybody. So I'm never talking about you. I'm talking about the, the category you are, which also might be my neurodivergency. When I categorize people, I also categorize myself you know, when people hear me talk about my life, they'll say, no way she's doing that. That can't be true, which is fair for you to think that I'm lying to you. But also if I'm lying to you, why is that? Now, I assume people are living lives that are different from me because that's what I see around the world, but not just different from me in terms of Brittany, but like not everyone's Catholic, not everyone's vegan, not everybody's, you know, not everybody's anything. So I have to assume that every time I visit somewhere else, I'm going to learn something new about myself because people are experiencing life differently from me, right? So then the question is, again, when people are commenting and saying like, you've changed, you're arrogant, you don't listen to people, whatever the, com whatever the criticism is, is that true? Or are we just disagreeing? You know? I think some people don't know the difference. And I'm saying I'm cool to agree to disagree. I don't care how you live your life. Just don't hurt kids and don't hurt puppies and, you know, be good to each other. But otherwise, like, I don't know, bro, like you live your life. I don't know. It's not my job to tell you what to do, you know, but I want to say what I want to say. Like, I want to be able to share my opinion without people feeling attacked. But how am I supposed to do that without you feeling attacked if, if I disagree with you is an attack? And then it feels like once again, I'm in that bubble where people don't want you to have a difference of opinion, but they want to pretend like, oh, I have friends who have difference of opinions. Have you ever heard a conservative or a progressive say that? Oh my God, my friends and I definitely have different opinions, but like they don't have different opinions, girl. They have very similar opinions, but like it's it's not that different. When I say I have people in my life with very different opinions than me, I mean, I have people in my life who have very different opinions than me. And yes, sometimes we fight. Sometimes we don't communicate. I love them anyways. Who cares? We're all going to die. You know what I mean? Like we're on this little floating rock in space. So from my perspective, like who cares if we disagree on who should be president? But at the same time, hey, like when you vote for that guy who's homophobic, like that's like, thanks for letting me know who you are. But also they always had, they always had told me who they were. And I let go of the desire to have them change because it's not my job to force people to make me more comfortable. 
But it is my job to put down boundaries and to say, I'm not comfortable in this space. I'm going to do something else. And you can do that. You can do something else. This narrative that you're trapped in your family bubble, you're trapped in your job, you're trapped in your country, not really. For some people, yes, that's your story and my heart goes out to you. That's not most of our stories. It just feels like that's going to be our story. But whenever you're ready, you can have a different story, right? Not everybody, but a lot of people. See, I'm adding in caveats. Not everybody, but a lot of people, you know? Discourse says I get both Brittany and the people who are having difficulty with her transition into a different content model. Mm. Ma- uh, Made it on chat says Brittany pisses me off all the time. And I actually really like that because um, our emotions are doorways to ourselves and the internal work I do. I agree with this. When I am upset with people, I know it's a me problem because either I'm holding on to a perception of them and I expect it different, which is a mistake because how are you going to radically accept as somebody if you live for their potential? Two, it's triggering something within my past maybe. Or three, I haven't accepted and let go of the attachment I have to my emotions or theirs. I agree. When I'm upset, I'm in conflict mode and I'm problem solving. That's when I'm learning the most about myself. You guys disagreeing with me on comments and I'm like feeling a way about it. I'm like, oh, I'm learning so much about myself and it's so painful, but I'm learning so much about myself. And so I am always grateful when you disagree with me, right? And I think that is like what I really believe in. Phoenix just said it. If we all agreed with everything, then there is no growth. Exactly. But it's very emotional, like it's emotionally laborious to have to introspect and introspect and introspect and introspect and introspect. Why does this person make me upset? Why does this person upset me? Why does this person come off annoying? Why aren't I vibing with this person right now? It probably has little to do with that person and more to do with our relationship with that energy, right? So if I'm watching a content creator and I'm like, "Uh, I'm not really in this mood right now. I'm just going to switch content creators. I don't leave a comment. I don't tell them you've changed. I don't tell them anything because their life isn't about mine. Now, I'm not saying you don't, you have to do that, but I'm telling you, that's what I've learned how to do. I don't leave comments. I might make content, but that's not me going to their space and telling them I'm uncomfortable here. Because again, that's why I say you don't want authenticity. What you want is content that's digestible, or you don't want to leave the group you're in, or you want, that's why I always just leave. Because if a space has changed and a majority of the people are vibing, like I'm the one who needs to leave, right? So again, we're all having different relationships with this and all of it is good as long as it's teaching you something about yourself, you know? Elsie says, I find that the uncomfortability in my own insecurities is my own insecurities, thoughts and perceptions. I mean, I think for me too, for me as well, right? Alice says, I appreciate it when someone says to me, I respect your opinion, but I disagree or adds, but I disagree because some people don't take that well though. Well, you would think though, that's why I always joke like, Even introspective people cannot get along together. Can you imagine sitting in a room with a bunch of people that are like, I'm very introspective. Hey, what you're saying upsets me. It's like, okay, that's a, that sounds like a you problem, right? Why are you telling me you're upsetting me? Now, if you're telling them that because you'd like them to meet you and do emotional labor for you, that is also valid. Hey, um, what you said hurt my feelings and I just need to know, I need you to know that it hurt me. You don't have to do anything about it, but I am upset or Hey, I'm upset. And something you said is making me upset. Can you please try to meet me in the middle and help me move past this? Both are valid requests of people, but they're still making an I statement. I am upset. You upset me. This is still about your ego. And I'm saying, do you know you're making your ego someone else's problem? And I've said that before in the past too, where I said everybody makes their issues other people's problems. And some people got really offended like, Are you saying LGBT people make their problems other people's problems? I'm saying we all do that. And I'm saying sometimes it's appropriate, like civil rights, and sometimes it's not appropriate. And I'm saying, do you know the difference between the two? Right? LC says, I like when Brittany pisses me off as well. It's really a good checkpoint for me. Like, hmm, why am I getting mad? Yes, exactly. Why are you getting mad? And same for me. When I read a comment and I'm like, why is this comment upsetting me? I feel misunderstood. I feel like they're painting me in a light I don't see myself. I feel kind of sad because I'm like, oh. And then I realize, why am I holding on to this attachment? Oh, because I'm not practicing introspection. I need to practice introspection to recognize and extrospection 
to recognize, oh, I am feeling sad over this comment. I wonder why that is. Oh, because I don't like not being seen, but uh, I got to accept that someone's not going to see me, you know, the way I want to. Okay. And then I let it go. People are on a journey. We're here experiencing each other. Right? What a great opportunity to be more introspective. It's why I joke like when you're practicing fiveness, there's nothing to be said because like what is there to say? But usually when you get bogged down in the ego, now we're having disagreements. Now we're having conversations. Now there's something to talk about, right? Because what is there to talk about if we're not talking about our ego? There's only the opportunity for experiencing. So if we're not discussing something that has to do with the ego, then we're experiencing something that has to do with sharing. I think you can share and have a conversation, but it isn't rooted in the ego. It's about exchanging information. Hannah says content creation is such an oversaturated industry that audiences find content creators expendable. So if someone pisses them off uh, one time, they dip out instead of introspect on it. Well, actually, can I say, I actually think that's a pretty good model though. It is better. It is part of, in my opinion, it is a part of self-care and introspection to know when to exit a content creator space. I think it is actually great to know you've outgrown a content creator or to say, I can't consume this content right now. I think that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm never offended when people leave my call spots, when they leave the Discord, when they leave the audience, because I see us as all on a journey and we're interacting on a journey. Like my life is my life. It has nothing to do with you. Your life is your life. It has nothing to do with me. If you need to go on a journey that's away from me as a content creator, you need to do that. I do not want to be the person holding you back. And honestly, I take no responsibility for you holding yourself back because I would never ask you to do that. I would never ask you to hold yourself back. If leaving my content makes you a better person, a more joyful person, girl, you had best to be joyful. Because I am under no illusion that I'm doing anything more than living my life. If anything, you're putting a burden on me I don't want. I don't want the burden of always having to be a content creator. I actually, this is why I don't team up with people or do business with people because I want to be able to quit tomorrow if that's my joy. And I can't do that if there's like a person going into business with me, right? Because now they're relying on me and everything. So I want you to do that too. I don't want you to think of Brittany as relying on me. I want you to think of your life as a journey. And right now we're visiting Brittany world and like her bubble. And if this bubble isn't like fueling your joy in a really profound way, Bye, girl. Bye, girl. I want you to go find yourself, girl. Yes, Miss Fishy says, outgrowing, but view it positively. Outgrow your friends. Outgrow your lovers. Outgrow your job. Outgrow your favorite YouTubers. Outgrow the whole planet if you have to, girls. Outgrow me. Outgrow me. And at the same time, if I grow at the same rate, then grow with me. I am always changing and growing. I will not be the same content creator in a year. I will not be the same content creator in two. I will not be the same person in six years or 10 years or 20 years. I will always be Brittany. I'll always be a sassy bitch, but I won't be this person. I cannot be because I'm always growing, right? Maiden with the super chat says the absurdity of sending you a super chat, hyping up the nothingness of the five. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Is it Rico? Rico says lots of people describe behavior and call it criticism. When criticism is describing the process of judging, you know, judging is a very interesting concept because like I gay judge, we call it gay judging here, which I know doesn't make sense to people, but like we're not really condemning you. We're just like raising an eyebrow, like, like give me the grace to raise an eyebrow at your choices, but also like, girl, you do you, right? It, uh, you go on to say, it's not just describing criticism is also giving advice, making judgments. That's the thing. So when people like, uh, listen, I understand coming from a background where people give unsolicited advice. I don't know if you know this. I cannot give you unsolicited advice because you do not, I do not hold the power to your attention. So I'm not your mom who's yelling at six, you know, six greater you. I cannot force you into a van and put you into a seatbelt and say, you have to go to church with me. I'm a content creator. You are so in control of your life. If you think I'm giving unsolicited advice, click off the video. If you don't like the way I'm reviewing someone else's content, click off the video. You are so powerful. And I, and I really need to trust that my audience will do that. I need to trust that you will click off the video. But also, if you don't, what lesson are you about to learn about yourself in terms of, I don't know, self-control, introspection, trauma? Alice says, and I think you are a human being, so some days you're more patient than others. Or maybe when you've done previous streams on the topic, you have a formed opinion, natural versus being open to a new topic. True. That's also true, right? I think audiences do expect perfection out of people because... 
Um, a lot of content is very, very curated. And I think that's one of the dilemmas of being a streamer is like this content isn't heavily curated. And so when you watch someone, you have to kind of like, okay, I don't know if your brain works like this, but I was thinking about Graham Stephan. If you watch Graham Stephan back in the day, he's a lot meaner and more theatrical and kind of like less entertaining. But if you watch him now, he's much more patient. He's much more interesting, but lots of clickbait thumbnails and titles. Now, when I watch somebody and I'm thinking, I don't like them. I never think to comment. I never think to tell them. I never think because it's not about them. It's about me, girl. And so I have the power to say, oh, I don't really love Graham in this context, but let me see what this person was experiencing. Now, this is my special interest in people. I feel like when I watch somebody I don't like, I'm like experiencing them. Now, I don't always have the most patience. If you go watch that Tom Foley stream I did on Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens, you'll see how little patience I have for that bubble. And at the same time, it's like, it's because it reminds me of my upbringing. And I have a lot of experience with that, right? Like 30 years of experience with my upbringing. So obviously I'm the least patient with things I've dealt with most of my life, right? And things that are new to me, I'm only patient to a degree because I am also a person who's a consumer. I, as a streamer, am also a content consumer like you. So you're watching me to consume me and I'm watching them to consume them, right? So I'm not just watching as a content creator. I'm also watching as a consumer and thinking, I don't like this. I don't like this content. Not, I think you're a bad person, but I don't, I don't like this content. Because I'm also the consumer. Now, I thought about this. What if I pre-watched my videos for stream instead and never came on as a consumer and only came on as a streamer? Like only as a content creator, not as a Britney. So full work mode. I could come to stream full work mode. Like none of me, <clears throat> well, some of me because I'm, yeah, I'm a person, but not me, like the consumer, me, just the content creator. So I come to stream. I say, this is what we're doing today. Here's the thing I pre-watched. Here's the points I want to focus on. This is what we're here to learn today. Okay, bye. Or, because that's different than if I come on as a streamer and I'm like watching it with you in real time and I'm experiencing it as a viewer. And I don't know if people know that's what's happening as well to streamers. It's like we're experiencing it in real time as well. So, I don't know. you know, we, we don't, we're thinking, and I think out loud. I've noticed that too is I thought my streams were endearing and cute because I was thinking out loud, you could see me come to conclusions and see how I made mistakes and formed opinions differently. But I noticed people don't have the patience like I do. I watch every, I watch all people's stream. I like watch the whole thing. I don't think people know that's what I'm doing. So they don't stick around. Like some people were like, I couldn't make it five minutes into this video. For sure, that's good. But also I'm not that kind of viewer. I usually give people like quite an amount of time if it's a video that I wanna hear from. But if it's not, then I don't, I don't write that in people's videos. I don't type on people's videos like, I couldn't get five minutes into this video. I don't think I've ever done that in my whole life. Because like, why would I do that? Why would I go to someone else's house and be like, I fucking hate your couch. Now, it's different though, in my mind, if you come onto my channel and I'm like, I don't like your couch. Because I'm not going to their house and telling them. I'm just saying it somewhere else. But also I'd say to them as well. But also I kind of see like YouTube channels as like, a space to jump into that, kind of like a portal or like a bubble. Like I'm going to jump into your home. How do you serve bread? You know what I mean? So my brain is like very, um, what am I supposed to be experiencing right now? What am I supposed to be feeling? You know? Yaya says, please don't. I like more open Britney. Alice says, I agree with Yaya. Okay. That's nice. Cass says, I like having Britney the consumer experience. I mean, I like it too. I do like it too. And I like how I'm doing things. But I'm just also sharing from my perspective what I'm doing, right? Alice says, I like how you currently do things. And then if you start the podcast again, then that's where people can get more planned out content. So that's the other thing, right? If people want more planned out content, I think you should rewatch all my podcasts. Because um, I am more thought out and there's more of a script and all that stuff. But streaming has been going great. Subscribers are up. View count is up. Money is up. So I'm getting a positive feedback of like people are enjoying themselves. And 99% of people enjoy my videos. I get great thumbs up ratios. But when there's a deep misunderstanding and people go, it's you, you're miscommunicating. Okay, then I need some, I need you to explain the miscommunication. Because for me, I feel like I'm being understood by the right people and misunderstood by the people that maybe I'm not supposed to be communicating with. And then again, I'd also like to update my language and help communicate myself better because I don't want people to feel bad. Like somebody on my comment section, oh, can I find it? Wrong video. Hold on, let me see if I can find it because I thought this was so funny. 
in a good way funny like just like in an interesting way and I try to apply I really should stop replying to so many messages it takes so much spoons but I just love doing I love talking to people bros I just find you guys also interesting. So listen to this comment. It says, I'm a fan of learning from people who are younger than me, but I did not appreciate this assessment. This sounded like it's coming from a young woman and a judgmental one at that. Not saying this woman doesn't have issues, but to go immediately into pinpointing the superficial reasons you think she hasn't had a relationship instead of coming it coming to it with compassion felt very dis- very icky to me, disappointing. Okay, one, when she says, or they say, uh, this sounded like it's coming from a young woman and a judgmental one at that. Me and this 40-year-old lady, you know we're in the same age group. She's a few years older than me. So first of all, I don't know if you're trying to say that I'm pretty and young or if you're trying to say what you're trying to say. But like me and this lady that I'm talking about, we're in the same friend group, right? Like if you're 41, you're my friend's ages. Like that's my friend group. If you're within 10 years of me, we're fr- we're in the same friend group, right? Okay, so then I was confused about that. Then they said... Um, saying this woman doesn't have issues, but going immediately to pinpointing the superficial reasons you think she hasn't had a relationship instead of coming at it with compassion. I literally cried in the video. I cried in the video. I don't know how much more compassion you need me to, I was, I didn't even, I just, and I even said I might be getting my period. I literally cried in the video. Now, um, I didn't think it was superficial reasons. I said she was essayed as a child, which she shared. That's certainly not superficial. Like, Saying she's dusty is a contextual expression of aura feeling. It's not saying anything more than that. And I think a lot of people thought when I said dusty, even though I explicitly explained it in great detail, people thought I was saying something I wasn't. But I'm not talking about her imagery because I think all people could be loved. I mean, God, if my husband lost half his face and it melted off, I'd love him. Who cares? But I'm saying the aesthetic signals something to people just like poor hygiene does. But more than that, there's an aesthetic that goes along with expression. So I'm when I'm categorizing people, I'm doing it to humanize them, not to dehumanize them. But it felt like they were saying I wasn't being compassionate, but I literally said she was essayed as a child. That's one of the greatest reasons to have trouble dating in life. So in my mind, how is that superficial? And then I have to think, well, maybe she didn't get through the video. Maybe she stopped watching. But then... Other people were commenting and they said, yeah, she seems to take for granted that she could give or take options and move as fine, move on fine signal, signal, oh my God, move on fine as single, despite not having the, the dearth of this woman did. I don't know what that means. I felt like people were thinking I've been single forever or that I was okay being single forever or like, it felt like, you know, it feels like people project onto me and I just need to clarify because one I don't want you to think I'm being mean but two if you ask me to be more you know do more emotional labor for you than you're willing to do for yourself I will block you right Alice says hey Brittany I just want to clarify my comment about saying I respect but disagree was in response to you asking for suggestions on how you can express your disagreement oh that makes sense Kay says would you enjoy the type of community that would prefer you as a content creator over you as a consumer um Probably not. I think I enjoy the way I do content now because it brings out really interesting people who have really interesting opinions, especially when you disagree with me. Um, If I was just a regular content creator and I wasn't being me, I probably wouldn't respond to comments. I'd probably respond to them very superficially. And I probably, like, I don't even know how I would do things. You know what I mean? So I, yeah, I don't... I don't think I would enjoy, I like the, I like feeling like I'm talking to real people and I like feeling like we're having really deep discussions. So I think a content audience that's very superficial is one that's constantly angry and misunderstanding you and assuming you're just content. Like I don't like those larger content. I don't want to be a large content creator. I just want to be large enough to solidify my career, but I don't want to be so large that people completely consume me as content. Though of course that's reasonable because I consume other people as content. So I'm not totally opposed to it. I just think it would be a different mode. And I I prefer the smaller. I mean, I'm pretty introverted, right? So I prefer the smaller. And so that's why I love our Discord events. You know? Discord said, I get Brittany. However, I think she's being pretty stubborn. I would love, I'm see, even now, I need the feedback. You're not giving me feedback. Like, I don't know if you know, you're not saying anything. 
that you didn't say anything. So I need specific specificity. Like, I don't know if you, if I just went to you and said, you're being really stubborn. And then I didn't clarify. It just, it's confusing. So can you clarify? I just want a clarification. Being stubborn doesn't mean anything to me because Middle Eastern people are all stubborn and I'm Middle Eastern. So I'm going to need some sort of clarification. What does that mean? Right? I, cause you can't say I get Brittany and then you're not communicating me. Like, I don't get it. Like, are, are you getting it? Because are you saying it's a bad thing? Should I stop being stubborn? Are you saying I am good and I should be stubborn? Because you get why I'm being stubborn, but I don't, am I being stubborn or am I being clear about my values? Because I'm not sure what the difference is in this context. I'm not getting clarification, guys. I need clarification, please. You know? Um, Ness says, I understood that video perfectly. And I felt like you were being very compassionate. She was also putting her situation out there looking for input, it seems, which you gave kindly, which by the way, I don't expect her to watch. I didn't tag her. I don't need her to see it. I've learned, you know, this last year, like I don't need to, if people find it great, but you know, Diana says, suppose at least tourist people are stubborn. <laughs> True. Shout out to the tourists, you know, why do you guys keep asking me about baby reindeer? I don't know who that is. I've got, that's the second comment I got. I don't know if this is a different person, but I don't know who that is. You know? Um, Phoebe said the people who like your current style just aren't the ones commenting disapproval on your videos. I mean, yeah, I suppose so, right? And again, the people that watch the stream aren't the people who watch the videos all the time. You know what I mean? So there's that. I love the streams. Take us on a journey. I love the journey, bro. That's my favorite too. Look, I don't, I really like the way I'm making content. The numbers show things are doing great. I just, you know what I mean? I don't, I would love to hear the criticism, but I'm not hearing criticism. I'm hearing, I don't like the way you are. I'm not sure what to do about that. Like, would you, I'm, I need a criticism. Like I need something to have the conversation about. I've already asked you multiple times. Is anyone going to see? And now I start to think, oh, there is nothing. <laughs> and then I start to sound like an arrogant ass because I'm like, no one's telling me anything. You know, Paulina says it's a show about a stalker and it would be interesting to hear your analysis. Oh, I can't do show analysis. Thank you so much. Like, Oh, especially stalker stuff gives me anxiety. You know, it's a true story. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll oh, you know what? Maybe we'll like, uh, maybe we'll do a discorded discussion about it or something because I get, I get anxious. I have a lot of, I don't watch a lot of content right now except anime. I'm overwhelmed with all the shows. Oh, in uh, physical 100 guys, shout out physical 100. So good. Right. Discord says, damn, this is really relatable. I think it's hard to state your beliefs strongly with complete confidence and not have the, not have that creative feeling of being judged to in others, judged being judged in others. To be honest, it's one of the many patterns in my communication that makes me suspect I'm neurodivergent. I always feel like I'm saying I just disagree and this is how I think, but people often hear I judge you and dislike you for your opinion. Girl, girl. Okay, stop. That's so true though. So true. Ryan says, give us examples of criticisms you would like to see. Uh, well, if you say I, well, okay. So I got this comment. Brittany, I don't think you're very good at taking criticism. Have you considered that telling someone their criticism is just their perspective and them getting internet triggered is a way of dismissing them without really addressing what you're saying? Yes, I have considered that. I feel like I laid out pretty clear, like this woman who said, like the criticism is, I don't like the way you made me feel. That's not a criticism. That's you expressing your feeling to me. So if you said, oh, I really liked your video, but I didn't get the full context here. And I feel like maybe you can add references in. Oh, thank you for, thank you for that criticism. I'll add it in references. But all I'm hearing is, I don't like the way Brittany is. And so I need her to do something about that, which with peace and love, no. Absolutely not. So of course I have considered that maybe, because again, if you, if you're telling me how you feel, that's, I can't, I'm not your mom or your therapist kids. Okay. So I don't, I'm not dismissing you. I'm literally stating an observation I'm making. If you think I'm wrong about that observation, tell me here, I'll give another one. I'll give another one. Okay. So how about this? This person says, yeah, it felt really different from most of her other content and really confused me. Edit. 
Now that I've watched more, I do think this woman is way too fixated and repeats the same things. She's so focused on missing out on high school and the past in general, it's not great. So a person who originally criticized me and felt like they weren't understanding me edited their comment to say, oh, I get it now. My theory is that people aren't watching my content through, getting offended, getting emotionally triggered, not medically, but emotionally upset, commenting, and then not being able to sit through the content, which I have to do the emotional labor to do. So I have to do the emotional labor where I sit through the content, I dissect it, I do all these things, I'm human, I get tired, blah, blah, blah. But the people that are commenting get stuck somewhere, comment, and then tell me I'm the one fucking up. But that's the problem is like, I don't understand the criticism then because you didn't finish the video, so you didn't even see me fully for my thought, right? And then I don't understand sort of like, now that people have finished the video, they're like, oh, I see where Brittany's coming from. Yeah, exactly. Or if you don't see where I'm coming from, can't we agree to disagree, right? That's what I'm trying to figure out is like, are you actually giving me criticism or are you just telling me how you feel? Because that's fine either way, but I don't know if you know the difference, right? And that's what I mean when I'm saying I'm not, I don't want to, I really don't want to ignore you, but I can't do something with your feelings, right? Brianna says, I think your words are very harsh and striking like dusty and ones are useless. So what you said strike a chord with people because the words are usually only used for people you hate. Yeah, I don't hate anybody. So I think that's probably the problem is I don't hate anybody. I gave up hating people a long time ago. Like that was something I used to experience, but like, I don't hate people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't hate people. Like, I just don't have time to hate you. No offense. Like, you're not a main character in my life. But I am frustrated with people sometimes. But I don't hate anybody. But I could understand that perspective. But do they know that's not a universal exp Like, I'm not having that experience. So if somebody was like, Brittany's kind of, I get comments about me all the time. I just go, yeah, that's what you think. Like, if you think I'm dusty, that would be weird. Because I feel like my aura is more like um, loud. <laughs> but it could, it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, ones are useless. I can see why that language is harsh. Um, it's it, see that's the problem do I be myself and talk like how I talk or do I change who I am for people probably change who I am for people right which runs us into the same problem we were having before why don't I ever feel safe enough to be myself because the world is not a safe place to be who you are that's why you have to form your own bubble or you have to join a community where you feel safe if I use language that people want to hurt me because I used it even though I mean nothing by it then I have to learn to be less myself and more digestible to people so I can be understood and I can do my job, which is so wonderful. I'm okay with that. But I want this to be a life lesson that that is what the world is asking. The world does not want authenticity. They want digestible content, which I think is fine. But I think that's what I'm trying to share with you guys is this tool of I can't even, I'm not even allowed to be myself. And if I can't be myself, well, when can I be? In your own bubble, when you form one. So then it's like, well, how do I form my own bubble so I can be myself? Right? That's the tool I would like to give you. You know? Yeah, it says I even get responses on my own comments and I'm like, oh, you didn't watch the whole video, huh? They don't. They don't watch the whole video versus my brain goes, I have to watch this to make sure I understand. And even if I don't finish something, I say I didn't finish it, Right? Alice says, without the context, a lot of people will project their own assumptions and insecurities onto what you say. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hits difference that I thought the vid about the 40-year-old virgin was clearly presented as the take of an individual, aka response. It came across as genuine and was fairly thought-provoking. I don't care if it seemed impolite. Well, politeness is also subjective based off culture, you know. Ah, 12, you said criticism is mostly subjective. Oh, interesting. So it makes sense that it starts with an I feel statement. Oh, see, I don't view criticism that way. I don't view criticism that way. I think criticism shouldn't be about I statements. It should be about you statements. Like, um, well, I, you statement, like criticism should be, I've noticed that without this context, it can be confusing. If you want, you can add in the context versus, um, or criticism, because criticism to me feels a little bit like more of like uh, not objective, but outside of the self. Like I always thought of criticism as like, I feel like if you added a comma here, it would make more sense in communication. But to an artist it might feel personal because it's like, this is my art, the comma and the placement is my art. You know what I mean? 
But I guess it could feel to the artist like your criticism is personal because the art feels personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jester says, as someone that tries to watch your videos in its entirety, it kind of is clear when the commenter didn't watch the whole thing. They are usually caught up in something you do and actually address. Yeah, yeah. I think that, I think that too. So then that's my job to radically accept that person and that bubble and how they think. So again, I'm not dismissing you, but I'm saying if you're not going to watch the whole thing and give me a criticism that kind of makes sense, it feels weird. Can you give an example of a good comment with good criticism? Um, yeah, like, well, I gave one just now, if that doesn't count. I can think of like, um, uh, a good criticism would be like, uh, I feel like a good criticism would be to add more clarity without it being about, um, hold on, I'm trying to think. Okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. Hold on. I'm trying to find a comment. Because good criticism to me is just about like, well, I think it's difficult because people don't know what you're aiming for. So good criticism feels like more outside the self than in the self. Like I can do something about it. I can do something about it without it being personal. I don't know if that makes sense. <sighs> Alice says, yeah, but I think the bluntness, harshness is way more fun. I find it funny and honestly, it's what I, a lot of people are thinking but won't say out loud. I think that, I think there's a part of me that agrees with that and that's why I want to say it. But also I want, I want there to be an openness to the communication barrier being met either way. Alex says, changing your personality because someone doesn't like you is not criticism. It's just judgment and subjective. Yeah, that's what I, I don't want to change who I am because you're uncomfortable. But I'm happy to like change things about my work that will help communicate my ideas better. So if the criticism is about communicating better, I'm open to it. But I can't be you. So if you were like, oh, this is how I would do it. Cool. But I'm not you. So I also have to think about my spoons, my neurodivergency, my chronic illness, all of that, you know. Uh. Chaos says, do you let your biases get in the way ever? I mean, I think we're all biased and prejudiced. So of course, right? That's why introspecting is like a, a thing you have to do actively because your bias and prejudice will catch you in a loop and you have to remember, you have to remember to, to correct yourself. So of course, right? I'm not perfect. I'm never advocating for perfection. Of course, my biases play a role, which is why I, I do sessions like this. Tell me the criticism. So I can be better. So I'm waiting. There's 170 of you in here. Nobody got criticism? That actually is about criticism I can change, right? Kay says, I think good criticism comes when the person sees the goal you're trying to reach and their advice is towards you achieving your goal more efficiently rather than about you personally or their personal feelings. Yes. So does anybody have criticism that is about me communicating better that doesn't involve me like, I mean, I'm okay masking more. If that's what it takes, I will do it. Like, I'll do whatever it takes, girl. But like, if masking more is what you want, I will do it. But then you have to understand that that's what you're asking people to do. And that's a very complicated, introspective question to ask yourself. Who am I to ask somebody else to be less themselves when all I want from the world is to be more myself? And that is the catch-22 of living to learn introspectively and extrospectively. We say we want a world of authenticity. We want to live free and without judgment, but you cannot do that and still form a society, right? So I'm going to challenge you. Are you asking me to mask more? And if that is the case, do you understand then that you yourself must mask more? And that itself is what society is. It is a place in which we must mask more so we can keep the peace. Would a good one be that you say both things that require too many hours of context and you need to be aware of that? Mm, I agree with that. It is true. You know, I do struggle with that. Can I be, if I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I do struggle with that. I, I really cannot fucking figure out TikTok to save my life. I just don't think I'm supposed to be there. I feel like the work that I do is not meant to be a 10 second video. I feel like to understand my brain and the work that I'm doing and look, I'm a nerd. Okay. All I do is consume philosophy podcasts and, you know, just like hours and hours and hours of content. I'm listening to audiobooks all the time. Like I'm always listening to things. So I have no concept, like I have no concept of what 
people are consuming. You know how you hear like people are always on their phones. Everyone's watching YouTube. And I was like, yeah, because we're all watching philosophy podcasts. Well, obviously not, Brittany. (laughs) But my brain has no way to conceptualize like what my audience has watched or what you know about or what I know about or what you know what I mean? So for me, if a YouTuber like I existed and I was watching them, I would just consume all of them. Like if you listen to Verveke's Meaning Crisis, it's like, what, 50 something episodes? Obviously, to understand Verveke's language, and I'm still learning it. I'm still like a baby. I still barely understand him sometimes. I have to translate it into my own language. I would have to rewatch and rewatch. I've rewatched some of Verveke's Meaning Crisis because I'm learning a whole new person. But I also am a philosophy person. So I know that what I'm viewing is a real consciousness. Now, I do think I'm pretty good at judging people in terms of categories, but I'm I'm open to being wrong. I've corrected myself before, but I do struggle with the fact that I'm consumable the best way and long format, which means like to understand Britney, you'd have to be like a philosophy nerd, I think, in the same way. Or you would also have to be like, okay with the bluntness and the packaging, which by the way, I do not hold people, like I don't ask that you want to consume me. I ask that you recognize, if anything, that you are the in control of your life. So instead of asking me to change, you can move off the channel, right? But I think that's a big introspection ask of people. Like, do you know you don't have to watch it? Like conservatives that think like gay people are shoving their beliefs down our throats. It's like, you don't have to watch the show. But they feel trapped and like, but I want to be a part of it. It's like people feel sometimes like they want to be a part of my channel, but they don't want to be a part of me. Or they want to be a part of the conversation, but they don't like that I'm having it. I'm not the only one having these conversations. You can go have these conversations with other YouTubers. Other philosophy YouTubers exist. And people who are more focused on the academic. So there, I don't know if people know there are options for them, but that's a great form of criticism, right? You know, I I do struggle with that myself. Like, fuck, I wish I was more digestible and shorter spurts. I just haven't figured out how to do that. You know what I need? I need a marketing person. I need someone to market my shit. But like, I don't know how to do that. I only know how to be myself. So, eh. and I didn't sign up to be a marketer, Okay. Like we know uh, you, but asking other people to watch three hours of content to context is a big statement, is a big ask. It is a big ask. That's, you know, but I'm, I'm okay with like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm a, like, I just, I don't plan to be a big YouTube creator. I just want to be me. But so I think that's the thing is like, I don't personally make that ask of people. I'm just asking them if they know that's what's happening, but they don't know that's happening. Like they don't know how to think. So they don't know how to think. I don't know the context. That's the problem is like people don't introspect long enough to know. I don't know if I have the context. Right? Like we watched 20, what, five videos from that Mormon lady to get the context. How many people watched 25 of her videos to form a full, like I watched 25 of her videos before I came to a conclusion. I think that's a pretty good fucking amount of context. Now, with that said, could I watch a, more? Sure. I'm happy to change my mind, but damn, I feel like I'm trying at least. Beauty school dropout, love that for you. I always dreamt about going to beauty school just so I could learn how to do my own hair and other people's. Super Chat says, I think you're cool. So did the Do We Know Them podcast when they mentioned you the other day? Oh my God, they were, can I, can I fucking say something? The Do, Do, um, the We Know Them podcast, the, um, 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 can you remind me of the girls' names? I'm blanking on their names right now. But they're so sweet. And I love the way she described my level system. She goes, it's like a scale of introspection. And I was like, I love her. Because a lot of people like get really weird about it. And then other people are like, oh my God. Because like if you're an astrology girly, if you're a scales person, if you're a Myers-Briggs person, then you know being put into categories is like the least offensive thing. That's what you want. But I think some people aren't like in that bubble. So they're like very, are you putting me in a bubble? And I'm like, ma'am. And so again, it's it's it was cool to see somebody from like a more normal bubble who comes from more of the content I consume to say like about the levels. Oh, it's just like a scale of introspection. I was like, thank you. Exactly. How is that offensive? But I get it, you know? Phoebe says, I don't know, your bluntness is so refresh is refreshing to me. Gets your ideas across crystal clear. Thank you. And a lot of you said, please don't mask more. Obviously, I don't want to. Like I don't want to. But that is what's being requested because right now I'm still waiting 
you know what I mean? For like an understanding, but I, I get it. I do. I'm also, this is a great tool, right? I'm trying to give you a tool. Like I'm trying to use myself as the punching bag to give you guys tools for your life, right? Webkin says, you seem to want to get personal slash intimate with people like flying to see um, content creators, then say we were never close to begin with. Not saying I agree, but it looked backstabby. Um, I think we're defining closeness different because even people in situations like that would be like, you've only met that person once. You've barely know them. Like everyone has a different degree of what it means to know somebody. For me, it's not the time you know someone. It's the level of understanding you have between them. The closeness is dictated on how many misunderstandings occur. The more misunderstandings, the less close you are to a person. The more understandings, the closer you are to a person. I don't judge how long I've known someone or how close I am to them. Sorry, on how long I've known someone. I judge it on how many disagreements we have when we're being more ourselves. So more disagreements means we're less close because it means we don't see each other, right? And I think that's the problem we're having is when I say I'm close to people or I feel close to them, it means we have... more agreements than disagreements because we're seeing each other. We're vibing, right? So when I say I'm not very close to someone, it means when I speak, they don't understand me and we're constantly bickering. And I've been in five-year relationships where I was like, I don't feel very close to you. I've lived with partners, roommates, where I'm like, I don't feel very close to you because we're not understanding each other. And that's the difference. It's like some people in some cultures, it's the time you spend with someone. But tell me the person who's been married 20 years and doesn't feel like they know their spouse. You can be married 20 years and not f- and feel like you're married to a stranger. Have you guys ever heard someone say that? I've been married 20 years and I feel like I'm married to a stranger. That's because you're not seeing each other. That's that's the world I come from. I come from a world where like closeness is how you understand one another. And when you agree to disagree, that's a version of understanding each other. That's a version of saying, I love you. We disagree. Let's move on. I grew up with my bestie who's a Democrat. And we grew up, I was a Republican growing up, of course, and we would debate and discuss and yell at the top of our lungs about pro-life, abortion, gay rights, all of this stuff. And we've been besties for over 20 something years now. We've known each other since we were nine and we're in our mid thirties. And people would say, oh, you're not going to stay friends. You disagree too much. But we really understood each other. And now, of course, we're both more liberal and I'm much more progressive now, which is very funny, but it is. It was never about agreeing. It was about agreeing to disagree and seeing the humanity in one another. And she's the, my, just like, she is my sister. You know, she's just, just the best friend. I've, I just, I'm so happy my parents moved me into this neighborhood so I could meet this girl next door and we could be besties, you know? And I love her so much, but it was never about agreeing. It was about seeing the humanity in one another in a profoundly connective way. We do not disagree. And when we do, we agree to disagree. And that is a very profound thing to do with someone. I love you, but I just don't agree with you. Is that okay? Can you still feel safe with me even if we don't agree? That's a big, that's a big intimacy closeness with someone. Can we feel safe with each other even if we don't agree? And for us, yes, is the answer. Obviously, that's why we're going strong 20 something years, baby. You know, Lexi says, maybe you could do a disclaimer about your channel and intentions at the beginning of your videos, like maybe even a 10 second text statement. I thought, girl, I thought about that girl. I thought about that girl. Oh, this, you know, what's funny though, is like, I, I, I thought, okay, I thought about how to do that. I was like, how do I do this? How do I explain to people like, this is the point of my channel because, but that's the irony. Don't you love that? I have to explain to people because they can't observe it on their own, which kind of proves my point. Like people need to be handheld. They can't even do it themselves. They need to be told what's happening, right? It's kind of funny. Hayda says, criticism. Don't try to reshape your bubble to accommodate the girls that don't get it. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't, right? Hits Different says, is this person not just doing social ontology via responding to the other YouTubers? It's not clear to me what people are offended about. I think they take something personal that I'm saying as if I know them. But they also don't agree with my assessments. But also, instead of just a disagreeing with my assessment, like, oh, hey, Brittany, I see you observed her this way. I actually think it's this. And then having a discussion, it's, I can't believe you didn't have compassion. You're so like, they like negative tone it. Instead of just saying, oh, I think we're seeing this differently. And then giving their argumentation. It's very much like, um, 
you know what I mean? I don't get it. Seeing comments on her last vid made me think that women herself saw her vids. Like the women saw themselves in her on the vids. Is that what you mean? Abby says, Unmasked Brittany is way more interesting to watch. I love her. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> I love you too. Thank you. Phoenix says, we will fight for the Bubbles cult. Not really. Just agree to disagree. Bubbles in the chat, guys. Bubbles in the chat. And I love this. Again, I'm just trying to use this as an example, you know, to have the conversation. Maybe asking other streamers like Dr. K on their thoughts should shed more light. Well, Dr. K runs into the same problem I run into. Of course, he has the Harvard degree to kind of lean on or not the Harvard degree, but the Harvard trained degree or like the the degree that he. So Dr. K runs into the same problem I run into, which is we're more from a philosophy background. Right. And so when we're talking, we're using that as like a understanding. But I don't have the degree to fall back on and say, like, look, I'm educated in this field. I'm just a person. But he has the degree to say, I'm an, I have a degree. So I think people are more likely to open up to him than to somebody else. But also, I just, I don't think you need a degree to have a relationship with philosophy or yourself. I think thinking you need that doesn't make sense for the way the world has functioned and formed over thousands of years, right? Chaos says criticism. Don't consider, stop considering trying to cater to the general population. You might be where you're at now because you didn't. Always work on yourself, yes, but considering, but considering masking again isn't good. I mean, I agree with you. I wasn't planning on it. I mean, I'm already masking to a degree, right? <laughs> I'm already masking to a degree. If I masked more though, I think it wouldn't be good, but I did mask a lot more a few years ago than now. So I feel like I'm in a happy place right now. The, like things are up, subscribers are up, viewers are up. I think I'm doing really good, but I'm also open to criticism, but I'm not, I want to make sure that I'm available to you for that criticism, right? Hayda says if Brittany masked more, it, would, it may alienate the neurodivergent audience that loves how loud she is with her opinions. True, true, at least me, but I have a strong aversion to masking for the comfort of others. Same girl. I don't want to do that either. Right? Like, I don't want to be less myself, but also I'm trying to challenge people to understand that's what they're asking, right? Hold on. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Mantis. Hey, Mantis says, yeah, don't mask more, please. You'll never appeal to everyone. It's damaging to you in the content. Agree. Maiden, one must learn to mask and unmask wisely. True. We must learn to suffer wisely. Absolutely, fucking lutely right? Um, Lexi says, when me and Brittany both need a pee break at the same time, I get so hyped that I won't, uh, end up behind stream. Girl, it's coming again soon, I'm sure. Kitten says, from my understanding, I think a lot of people have started to find your content polarizing since you started streaming and stopped podcasting. Two very different Britneys. Very true. Hey, that's a great fucking point. Very true. Very different Britneys. And some have given me that feedback. Oh, I don't really like your live stream persona. I prefer your podcast persona. So here, I, I've been really thinking about this. I'm happy to bring back the podcasts or video essays or maybe whatever. I don't know what to call them, right? Commentary videos. But I either have to take away a Discord event or stream less, right? But the monetary value isn't there. They say they like it better, but the monetary value isn't there, which is interesting. I do make more money streaming. And people subscribe more because of the streams. Mm, see, then I wonder if I go too niche into the podcast realm, if it's too niche and it takes a lot more spoons, right? So then I have to think if I do that, it has to be worth it because I'm, I'm working. But also maybe I could take the stream clips and organize them into a much better digestible like splice of information. So maybe I could just heavily edit the clips for a stream, right? And again, I'm not really asking for your opinion on how to be a YouTuber because I'm already a successful YouTuber. I'm asking your opinion as a, as a consumer, which do you find yourself more interested in? And is it the majority of the audience? Because right now, the majority of the audience, the stream is working better. It just is. The numbers are there. So then I have to tell myself, follow the numbers and not what the audience wants because the audience is telling me what they want with their viewership. So I'm, again, I'm not asking you how to be a YouTuber. I am a successful YouTuber. Thank you. But as a consumer, that's the question. Because I like everything. I like streams. I like podcasts. I like everything. I watch everybody. I don't discriminate, you know? Oh, Kitten, great fucking point though. You're a lot more joking on streams and your jokes can be quite controversial at times. A lot of people like it, but it can also be incredibly shocking to hear depending on the person. Okay, 
I thought about joking less. I did. I fucking you hit it, girl. I did think about joking less. I think I'm funny and I think my sarcasm is clear and I think I'm being so blunt about it. But I did think about joking less. I did. Yep. I thank you. I did. What do you guys think? Should I joke less or should I say it's a joke? It's a joke. Like, what should I say? That's what I'm saying. I think you're right. Uh, villainy with the super chat says people who don't get your channel seem to think assertiveness in women equal aggressive slash prescriptive and aggressiveness in men equal per, uh, assertive and perceptive. There's data on this. There's actual studies that have been shown that women with my personality are less liked by both men and women than men with my personality. Men are seen as leaders and capable, while women are seen as like judging them. Now, I have two theories about this. One, misogyny. And two, I think women take, I think people take women's opinions more seriously than men's. I definitely, because I got that feedback from a man once. A man was like, yo, when my guy friends say the same criticism to me that you say, it hurts coming from a woman. I said, why? And they said, I think we just, I think we want to impress the woman more, even if there, she's not romantic, than our guy friends. But yeah, hearing a woman say this to me hurts my feelings more. And I was like, oh. That sucks, you know, fuck, sucks. Maybe I should transition because like, no, like also like, what am I supposed to do? Not be a woman? You know what I'm saying? So I think you have a really, see, I just like, see how I like, but do I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, it feels like people are asking me to do a lot of emotional labor for them that I feel like is a little inappropriate. That's what it feels like. It feels like you're asking me to do a lot of emotional labor for you. You know, Ooh. Chrissy says, I don't think she has to mask going for four away all the way, but I do think there must be something the viewers are slightly picking up on. Oh, I think it's that bluntness girl. Is that jokes? I do make some harsh jokes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hits different says, I have now read a few of the comments on that vid. The negative ones come come across as personal, like they are offended, but this YouTuber didn't play into the excessive sympathy game. Okay, that's how I felt too. Like I was feeling like this feels like they're personally upset, but I don't know what to do about that. So I'm open to criticism, but I feel like this isn't criticism. I feel like this is personal and I'm not in, I'm not your mom or your therapist, you know? Ryan says you have to consider that your ideas are not easily digestible. A lot of what it requires a lot of pre-thinking to know where you are. That's true. I've watched Verveke's work so many times and always catch new things. Oh, same. Oh my God. You know what I appreciate? I always get these comments that are like, Rewatching the levels video, oh, learn something new. I'm the same way. I rewatch and rewatch and rewatch things because I learn something different every time. Kitten says the only reason I would personally mask more on stream is if too many people, too many to me, people were getting incredibly upset at from my audience. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is like I want to build a larger audience because I think the discourse is so good. But also, how do I find the weirdos like us? And also, you know, hmm. Yeah, that's always the conundrum. Like I said, work's going great. Like I can't even complain about it. I just want to make sure that if there's real criticism, I answer it. Otherwise, like, sounds like I'm doing okay, right? The numbers say I'm doing okay. My main core audience says I'm doing okay. And if one or two or five or 10 or 30 people out of almost 100,000 are upset, that's okay too. You know what I mean? P.S. guys, subscribe because I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers this year. Thank you. Hey, this is I only mask for money. So I guess Brittany wanting to mask more for YouTube makes sense. If the idea was a broader, uh, yeah, that true. This is my job and I want to solidify my career. So masking kind of makes sense because it's my job. That hate neurodivergent to neurodivergence. That's what I'm saying, guys. Do I need to mask more so I can keep my job? Like, because I want to keep my job. But also, I think I'm so good at my job because I'm open to the criticism but you got to make sure you're criticizing me and it's not just your feelings. Feelings are valid, but I'm not your mom or therapist, so I can't do the emotional labor for you. I can't do that, right? So then I have to think about it from that perspective. Like, I don't want to cock block my own bag because I'm not masking hard enough. Like, if it takes masking, girl, I'll mask. I'll do video essays for a living. I'll switch careers right now. But also, does the audience know that that's what they're asking of content creators? And I don't think they do, but I think they do. Discourse says, I think the way we consume and observe content does not come naturally to a lot of people. It seems like you've been getting new viewers from diverse communities. It might help to have a disclaimer to explain what you're doing on stream. If people get it, great. And if they don't, at least you clarified ahead of time. I agree with that. Yeah, I think, okay, I'll start with disclaimers. 
And I'll say like, this is what we're doing. So, uh, maybe I can warm people up and say like, this is what the content is. So they can go into it with that mindset. I think that's a good, I think that's right. I think Discord's right. Mantis says, I think people struggle with separating your critique based on, there's a typo right here, ideas. And I only hear you criticizing individuals. I don't know how to, uh, Paul, oh, girl, there's a lot of like typos, I think. Oh, concepts and ideas. I don't know how to, um, like clarify that. Mm, that's the question. <sighs> Lexi says you should do what Umville, um, 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 says. I don't know how to say this name. I know this content creator though. It doesn't wear a hat that says, be gentle, I have autism for every video. Stop it. 12 says, I'm finding it hard to understand a lot of points you were making. I'm really enjoying the streams, but at the same time, it feels like we are speaking completely different languages. We probably are, which is also ironic. You know, there are people that hate when I say we're speaking different languages. It like triggers them. And they're like, what the fuck is she talking about? Nobody speaks different languages. And I'm like, yeah, we do. Even if we speak English, we're absolutely, absolutely using words differently. So that's even something that like, okay, so then... See how I feel like I know my level system and the bubbles make so much sense because in order for us to have this conversation, we have to acknowledge a difference of perception. So acknowledging a difference of perception means radically accepting that we are using language differently, even if we all speak English. Look, I communicate so well with people that don't speak a lick of English, sometimes better than people who speak English. Because we're not using language. We're not getting bogged down by the language. We're using different forms of language instead of verbal, physical, tonality, facial expressions, right? So all of this, to me, when I have this discourse on the internet, feels like, okay, I'm right. Because look at the way they're misunderstanding me. When I know in my heart of hearts, I'm not trying to be mean, girl. If I was trying to be mean, I'd say it. Now I'm being mean, right? I'm not trying to be cruel. Oh my God, thank you, Zim. Smoking a bowl for you. Thank you so much. Let's go. So that idea, again, that idea of like we're speaking different languages is my point. The world does not universally understand each other. And so we're coming to conclusions based off that bubble. And that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say use me as the punching bag, but that is what's happening universally. So then you have to ask yourself, how do I have a different perception with information? Which is a whole new challenge. How do I understand that people are perceiving things very differently? And there is very seldom an objective to reach. That there could just be two subjectives that are true. Turbo says, I think it's the wording language thing. Even earlier in the stream with your wish all conservatives were gone quotation example, I can see people still thinking you hate conservatives despite your explanation. It also could just be long form content issue as even I can lose focus during a two hour movie, let alone a seven hour stream. So again, I think if I could give anybody a tool, it's when you miss when you're upset about somebody, make sure it's not you, right? If you're upset with some, make sure it's not your perception, but then people will say, it's not my perception, Brittany, it's your delivery, right? But if I clarify and I clarify and I clarify and people get it, and you're not getting it, then there is a barrier. Now, this is my solution. Now, this is, okay, this is what upsets people the most. I will say, it seems like we can't communicate to one another. Let's let it go. Let's let go of our attachment to understanding each other and let it go. And they'll say, no, Brittany, if you really understand me, if you really love me, if you're so good at conversations, you'll wait till I get it. Sis, it could take you 20 years to get it. This could be an epiphany thing because if I can't explain it to you with like communication verbally, if I can't recommend a reading to you and have you get it, it might be one of those things that in 20 years you're like, oh, I finally get what Brittany says. I think one of my favorite things someone said to me was like, oh my God, Brittany, I just got it. I got the joy thing. And I'm like, cool. Like people hear me say things, but it usually takes a moment. Just like with me, people will say things and then five years later, I'm like, holy fuck, I just got it. I just got what I read. Like you don't get it till you get it. And so I want to give that tool to the internet because I get it. I agree with you. I think the way we all say things is a miscommunication because of bubble differences. And I'm saying when I feel upset with someone, I know it's me. And I'm saying, do you know it's you? And they probably don't, which is why they attack the YouTuber or attack their parents or attack other people. Because it's usually us. And then it happens in cycles. So people miscommunicate and misunderstand other people. And they think those people are scary. So they 
form allegiances to destroy these people because these people are scary to us. And then there's this whole cycle. And that's why it's so scary to be misunderstood. That's why being neurodivergent or queer or a person of color or black or Asian or whatever is so scary in a world where the majority is different from you because you are constantly trying to calm them down and saying, please don't be afraid of me. I really am just like you. I love like you and I fear like you and I'm misunderstood like you and I just I just want an easy life like you. Please don't hurt me. And then people say, no, I know what she's really thinking. She's vindictive and malicious and I know what this person is thinking. They want to groom my children and I know what this. Do you want to groom children? Do you want to hurt people? Most people aren't out here hurting people in a really big way. Most of us are out here hurting people in different kinds of ways. We're not out here grooming kids. I mean, some people are, but like, we're not those people. Okay. We're not those people. So this idea we have is rooted in fear. And I think fear is the root of all evil because it forms bad perception. When you do not sleep enough, scientifically, if you do not sleep enough, you will see people uglier than they are. They are. You will see them angrier than they are. Perception is the same when you are afraid. When you are afraid, you will see monsters in the darkness in which they do not exist. And so I'm asking you, do you understand that you are afraid? Do you understand that you are misunderstanding because of a perception? Do you understand that Katie could have a misunderstanding of perception, just as George did? They misunderstood each other, which now created a war in the internet that was no one's business in the first place. Katie should never have posted about it. But the problem is, is that she had a perception and she felt a need to share her story and then people felt a need to defend George. But now people aren't even defending George. They're defending themselves. People are getting upset over the situation because they're projecting their consciousness into it instead of understanding it was there for us to observe. This isn't about you and you're making it about you. You remember how we talked about celebrating people's happiness, be happy for other people? When someone, when that woman, that 41-year-old virgin said, the Mormon lady said that she did feel it like kind of sad that her friends would get married and she'd be single and they'd be partnered. That's because you're making their marriage about you. Don't do that. In my opinion, you shouldn't do that. It's okay to feel your feelings, but you have to make sure that you understand why you're feeling your feelings. And if the why is the wrong reason, try to let go of it. See, the problem is I think with my work, I try to point out what's wrong to let you know you can change. But what people hear is that they're wrong for having the feeling. You're not wrong for having the feeling. I think it's wrong to keep a wrong feeling though. If the feeling is wrong, I think you should change your perception. I think Katie has a wrong feeling and a wrong perception and she should change it. But she's not wrong for having it in the first place. It was a real phenomenon. But she should change it because she'll be happier and so will the people around her. But... Misery loves company and plenty of you are happy to be miserable. And I think that's something that no one wants to admit. If you want it to change, you'll figure out how. If you don't want to change, you'll figure out how to not change. That's my theory on people. That when people are ready, they change. And when people aren't ready, they yell at other people. <laughs> that's my theory. That's my theory. Okay. Okay. Uh, Michael says, do you share more beliefs now? I mean, I share as, you know, it, it, you know, I've been on YouTube for like 12 years. So I've gotten in and out of sharing. I feel like I share a lot now. Villainy says, you are conservative. I find something new out every day. Girl, can you imagine? For all the people that have been in my audience for so long, isn't that great that people are now learning? You know what I mean? I just love that. I, you never know the complexity of a person. Conrad with the super chat. Thank you so much. Says, you use a lot of shorthand. True. And I think you don't finish thoughts. True. Humans is going to human is a shorthand for like eight underlining ideas. And that's where much confusion happens. I think slowing down might help. Okay, hold on. Okay, question about that. Because here's where I struggle. I did this in a couple of live streams where I would re... Okay, this is so much bigger. I used to be a peer educator for BDSM and sex education on YouTube. That was one part of my arc as a content creator. And I got bored because every fucking video was the same. How do I find a dom? How do I be sex positive? How do I use a condom? And I was like, I'm bored. And then I was like, I don't want to have this conversation anymore because it's not interesting. And I don't want my career to be answering the same question. 
unless I dedicate my content to being like introducing newbies to philosophy, not very interesting for me. Maybe I do YouTube as introducing newbies to philosophy in Discord as like advanced classes <laughs> that aren't classes, right? Discussions. But I use a lot of shorthand because I feel like I bring my audience up to date about the language and then we can have deeper conversations. You can't have deeper conversations if we're still arguing about what is a person, right? Like you can't go deeper into the conversation if I can't shorthand. So I run into this dilemma as a content creator. So I almost thought about using Discord as like advanced classes and then keeping the Discord 101 event, which is like newbies come in and ask questions I've answered a thousand times and I'll answer it again. But on YouTube, I tried doing that on a stream where I would like, I'd say, oh, this is what I think a bubble is. And this is what I think this. And then the main audience was like, Brittany, we already know you repeat yourself. And then the stream turns into me repeating myself for the 18th time. So the regular viewers get bored and they don't want to watch because I'm not expanding the ideas because I'm still trying to tell people what a bubble is. So then I shorthand. So then somebody said, you should make a video talking about like how you use words, but you know, bitches ain't going to watch that you know bitches ain't gonna watch that anyways. So then I have to radically accept that this is the part of content creation that is normal. And so I'll try to do that. But ultimately, like, I'm, I think this is just gonna be my life for the next 10 years. I think this is just gonna be my life. Me constantly having uh, yearly talks like this, you know? Mikey with the super chat says, do you know what the point, do you know at what point people's perception of you stopped mattering to you as a content, as a content and as a consciousness? Well, Mm, this is a double layered question. Do you know at what point people's perception of you stopped mattering to you as a content? I assume as a content creator and as a consciousness. Um, as a content creator, I think it's still there because this is a brand and I'm trying to, I'm trying to be good at my job. So I think I don't, I don't think I can never, I think to run a business, you have to care with the customer base, how they perceive the content. So I don't think that will stop. That's a business perspective. As a consciousness, as a Brittany, um, I mean, I think everything happened in that 30th year. I think when I turned 30, um, maybe 31, like during that process of being, you know, what I call like a baby five, I think my whole perception shifted. I think I've always cared about input, but I've done things anyways. Um, Dr. K talked about this recently on a video. I shared it on the discord where he said one of the underlining characteristics of a CEO is when shit is hard and they don't want to do something, they will change the environment to feel comfortable, which then will produce productivity. So they end up getting things done even when they don't want to versus a person who internalizes the emotion. And when things are hard, fixes the emotion within them, but doesn't produce productivity because um, they don't change the environment. They change what's within them. I'm the CEO category. I am productive even when I don't want to be. I took work off the other day from stream and I still edited three videos and posted content. But in my head, I didn't work that day. I have a brain that when I am uncomfortable, I do it anyways. I have a brain that it's not even up to me. Like talk about free will. Even when I want to just relax, my which is, by the way, you could say trauma-based, hyper-independence. There's like lots of explanations for this. Um, my biology, you could say my environment, my personality type, but I just do what I want anyways, even though I'm uncomfortable. And I think that that comes from a deep sense of security that I know I'm doing good and I know I'm doing right by my values. But also it's because I do think we're animals on a planet. Like I genuinely do have this belief. I don't know this. I just have a deep belief that I'm pretty sure there's no God and I'm pretty sure there's no magic in the sense, in the way that we perceive it. I'm pretty sure whatever's true is true. And I'm pretty sure everything we experience in life is real. Whether we're perceiving it as accurate or inaccurate, I think our bodies have a biological reaction to things that is just, it makes things real, which is why you can perceive a memory that isn't real and feel the physical consequences of it. Because there's a realness to the fact that we're like these biological creatures. And so I recognize and deeply know that everyone's just doing what they think is good. Everyone. Everyone. Even the people that I think are the worst humans on the earth, they are doing what they think is good. Now, good is a very difficult subjective word because we project good 
as something we deem worthy. But good means what is the right thing to do. And right doesn't have to do with morals. It has to do with desire. I desire to do this thing, so I'm going to do it. Now, obviously, I want to do it with reason, in reason, within reason. I want to be aware of how I'm impacting my society and my family and myself. But ultimately, there are just some things we have to do no matter what. So it's not like one day I woke up and I was like, I'm not going to care what people think about me. It was more like one day I woke up and I said, hey, this thing is really eating me up inside. I should probably figure it the fuck out. And then over time, I came to, with the data, a conclusion that I was always going to be misperceived unless someone fully saw me. And since I had never met anybody who fully saw me my whole life, I had to then let go of this perception that people could see me fully and be open to the fact that it might never happen. And if it did happen, cool. Now it happened. I'm really lucky. And luck plays a huge role in this. I was lucky enough to run into my partner and he was lucky enough to run into me on our adventures. We were both doing adventurous things, whatever that means. Your whole life is adventurous, no matter what you do with it. Okay. And we ran into each other and we're like, cool, do you want to do life together? We negotiated and now we're doing life together because we see each other really, really, really well. So we can unmask and be in front of each other. I saw a criticism of me on the internet or not a criticism, but a, a doubtfulness where they're like, I, I told the story of where my partner and I will like look at hot girls on the internet. I'm like, she's prettier than me, right? And he, he'll he be like, yeah, I can definitely see how she's prettier than you. I'm like, yeah, look how beautiful she is, bro. And people were like, there's no way she does this. I can't believe she like she can handle that. I could never at least say that I'm the most beautiful girl after. Like people were projecting their insecurities onto me. But I've worked my whole life to seek out what is true and separate from my ego. So for me, my husband and I looking at a woman who's just like factually better looking than me is not insulting to me. I think I'm great. My ego doesn't take a hit. But you know what does annoy me is when people lie to me. So if my husband is like, oh, you're so much prettier than her, I'd be like, why are you lying to me? Because then he's not seeing me. So how could I care about a world that is so insecure, it can't even handle me calling someone dusty? How could I care about a world that is so insecure, they can't even handle two women scissoring? How could I care about a world that is so insecure, they can't even handle like leaving the house because somebody might perceive them? How can I be... How can I even consider what people think about me when you don't even know what you think about yourselves? You want to have the hard conversations? You want people to be authentic? You can't handle me calling a bitch dusty. Dusty. What is so offensive about dusty? And if it is that offensive to you, God forbid your life is any harder. Did that answer your question? Did that answer your question? Was that too unmasked? Should I mask? I'm sorry. Mm. Was that too unmasked? Should I? Mm. See, now I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, girl. Madalena says, I don't know, Brittany. I got you from the beginning. See, but our brains match up. See, if your brain matches then it latches, girl. If your brain matches, then it latches. Ooh, I should put that on a shirt. You know what I'm saying? So if your brain matches, it latches. And that's the difference. So when I notice myself frustrated with people, I'm like, why don't I understand that? Or if I do understand it, why am I still upset with it? Probably a value difference. Alusual says, I think so many of us are in our trauma. It makes it hard to perceive different types of language spoken. That woman's audience seems to be at least. I agree. That's what I'm, that's what I agree with. That's what I'm trying to point out. I'm trying to point out, I'm not trying to offend you. You're upset because of your feelings, which are valid. But also you can't ask somebody to change or mask because you're uncomfortable unless you have that kind of relationship with them. Vibrancy says, yeah, because if you want a new audience, they'll be confused. But if you overexplain, the regulars get bored. It's a paradox. It's a paradox. That's why they had to write that book, Catch 22. Abby says, I like that you had your levels video pinned and referenced to direct new viewers to it when they had basic questions. That stream didn't get derailed. Yeah, or that way, that... That way stream didn't get derailed. Yeah, I think that's like another thing is like I understand it's like two hours long, but to me like two hours is nothing. Like watching a two hour podcast is like, yeah, thank good. I don't like videos that are short. So I always, you know, that's also a part of it, you know. Phoenix says your language is what attracted me. I do, I could understand every word and it is helping me find the words to express what I've been feeling. I was stuck in that level four for the longest time. Great. 
And look, originally my content was to find interesting people to talk to. And then now I think my content, that's the question. Who am I trying to talk to? I think as a content creator, that's really difficult. Who am I trying to talk to? I don't know. I think I just don't think about gender that much. And I don't think about those things. I always say I'm, I'm aiming for girls, but I'm not really just aiming for girls, right? I'm just aiming for people that are interested in what I'm interested in. But that's not vague. Like, that's very vague. Like, I couldn't write copy on that. You know what I mean? So, Juliet says, I love your personality. It's so interesting. I'm also, I'm so interested in people too. I think that's what it is too. Is like, I think my audience is deeply interested in people who are the main audience. And then other people think they're interested in people, but they're interested in, it's, I'm interested in people to figure out myself. Why are, oh, that's a good question. Why are you interested in people? Because I'm interested in people to figure out myself and other people. But like, I'm not trying, I'm not interested in people so I can talk shit. I'm interested in people so I can categorize them. Why are you interested in people? And that's a question to everybody. Like, why are you guys interested in people? Because I think that changes things. If people watch content to get their opinions, give it like regurgitated back to them, like definitely don't watch my channel. But at the same time, if you're interested in people, then you have to be interested in how people think differently. Now, when I say people think differently, I don't mean that means, oh, they're always right. I mean, people think differently now what is my next question, right? Mantis says at some point, it doesn't matter how much you explain yourself or your ideas. Some people aren't listening. They're projecting. I don't think you can do uh, much about that. Amen. And especially if I get bigger, if I get bigger, then I'm just going to have to deal with these all the time and stop answering comments. I thought about that. Obviously, if I get big enough, I'm not going to be able to answer every comment. And then it's going to turn into me only answering member comments. And then it's going to turn into me. So the natural flow is that I get bigger. I ignore all the comments that don't get it. And I pay attention to the comments that do. That's probably the best solution because I want to have more conversation and I want to pull people towards the discord so we can have more conversations there. Um, which means like, I think that's probably the best strategy strategy, but again, I'm open to criticism. I'm open to idea exploring. I just want, I want to be, make sure we're hearing each other. Like she says, I'm trying to be more like you to meet in a healthy middle because I'm on the opposite end where I really struggle to get things done, especially when I'm stressed out. I mean, give yourself a break too. I mean, gosh, even I eventually have days where I can't get off the couch and I'm like, holy fuck, Brittany, get up. And I can't. And that's just what it is. Sometimes my body is like more in charge than my consciousness. And I'm like, eh. Like there's only, so then that's a great moment for meditation and like letting go of the stress. But also like stress is life. Life is stress, you know. Kay says I'd be interested in knowing more about that animals on a planet belief. I think I understand what you mean, but that, but it feels like there's no way to ask what that stance is proposed, what that stance is proposed. It only brings more questions. Okay. Have you guys seen that video? Um, History of the world? What is it called? History of the... What's this video called? History of the entire world. Is that what it's called? Yeah. 167 million views. Do you guys know that video? Should we watch it together? It's 19 minutes. Do you guys know this video? This is just how my brain works. I'm like, okay, we're like, this is literally my brain. If you want to know how my brain, like this video is my brain. It's like, this is like, yeah, that's what it is. That makes sense to me. Yes, Miss Fishy says, I like exchange of ideas. It's stimulating, but mostly to learn about myself. I use people as a mirror for myself. I extrospect on other people and then flip it back on myself and ask myself how I feel. A fucking men. Same. Same Fishy. Exactly, girl. Conrad says, like, I would be more judgmental to certain cultures without Brit saying, we talk loud, it's not yelling. Middle girl. The amount of people who used to call the cops on my Lebanese friend because his family was loud is insane. The amount of white people that would call, and I know we're all white, but we're brown. He was brown. They were brown Lebanese. But like, people would call the cops on their family. And I'd be like, why are you calling the cops on my friend, bro? And they're like, they sound like they're ripping each other's throats out. I'm like, they're just talking. Okay, they're kind of yelling, but they're just talking. Like, they were never physically violent, ever. They, it was funny. They'd be yelling about things that don't even matter. And people would call the cops on them. People thought people, they thought they were doing drugs. They thought so many things about this family. This family was just immigrant. Their dad died when they were young. They had a hard fucking time. And they moved into a suburb in Orange County, which let them live there in a neighborhood full of people that were snobby. They were the nicest family. There's nothing fucking wrong with them. I mean, I mean, who's in dysfunctional if your dad dies young? That's fucking hard. That's what I mean. It's like their dad died. Their breadwinner died. A mom had four kids and a new recent immigrant. And you think this life's going to be easy? Like no compassion, bro. And instead of helping this single mother, they called the cops on them rude anyways 
All because they were loud. Racism, bro. Racism. Phoebe says, I'm interested in people to figure out who I want to hang out with once I'm out of isolation. Oh, nice. Oh, I like that. And who wants to hang out with me? Oh, vibes. Hannah says, I like to interact with your chat. Nice noise. Cass says, I always just love stories, creating stories, hearing stories. This is some uh, projecting that happens. But being able to go above the projection leads to more thinking. True. I love this video. I love this video. Should we watch it? It's a great video. But that's that's what I mean. I know people keep calling me woo woo and Brittany's a crystal girl. I'm like fully in the science bubble, but also I don't care about the science bubble because it's often very like misogynistic, racist and stupid. But obviously there is something to science and science is real. But obviously the way we convey that science is annoying because they also stunt themselves. But I am fully in the evolution bubble. I think we are evolved animals on a planet. And I fully think we've migrated into different countries and have different wars based off different cultures and all of us could have been one another. Like if our ancestors millions and millions and millions of years ago just like landed somewhere different on the planet, we would have been different people. Like I fully believe we're just like evolved animals, but also I think evolved animals have a consciousness. I think plants have a consciousness and I think it's on a spectrum. And so I feel like this is all very data-based. I feel like there's so much science to this. But because I'm not a science major, I can't convey it that way. And I do philosophy instead. I think people like think I'm woo-woo or something. But in my head, I'm like, but it, doesn't it just make sense? That, like whatever is true is true. Like whatever is true is true. I'm not here to argue what's true. I'm here to argue if we have bad information. And I think we often get bogged down in bad information because like we, we don't know how to have a relationship with things that are difficult. I mean, if you're going to get upset that I use the word dusty, how are you even going to have the conversation that you might just be an animal on a planet? You know, I just don't get people why they think they can handle reality if they can't even handle the word dusty. You know, what are we talking about here? Like, why do you think you can contend with like the hardships of life if you can't handle the word dusty? I just feel like, you know what I mean? I just feel like, are we, are we playing the same game? You can't even, you can't even handle being compared to another person. You know, and you want to act like you're playing with the big boys because like you think you're special. You think you can't be compared, which is interesting. Mantis says, I think you're doing well, Habibi. Thank you. I appreciate what you've created. I don't feel safe in many spaces and hear the nuanced conversations I'd like. So whatever you're doing, it's working from my perspective. Let's fucking go. What if science isn't secretly magic? I mean, I just think if magic is real, it's real. And it doesn't have to be more than that. Like, I think my brain just goes, whatever's real is real. So if God is real, cool. Which God? Who? Which one? We're doing Joseph Campbell right now in the Discord. And he's talking about that, how like all the gods are real. They will read from Christianity, like the story of Adam and Eve. And then they'll read from like Native Amer or Native um, cultures, not Native American, but Native cultures, their origin stories. And they're very similar. They'll show like how countries... Like literally we dispersed as an animal planet, like an animal species all over the planet. And yet we had shared knowledge. Like that's what's so interesting about people is this idea that we're special is I think ruining our relationship with life because it's convincing us that us being alive isn't enough. We have to be special in a different way. But like the fact that we're alive and what I discovered here is being discovered over there is like the magic. Now, call it magic, call it science, it doesn't matter. It's the fact that you exist is kind of profound. But at the same time, it's not profound because you probably are just an evolved animal. And then finding that relationship, that perception between the two is key. That is what I think ultimate introspection, extrospection is. Realizing that you are profound, like existing in the most profound sense because you are alive. And I am on this thing called YouTube. And also that it doesn't matter because I'm one more human in the billions of trillions of lives that have come before me and will continue to happen. We are neither special nor are we not special. We are so special. And I think that is like a really difficult thing to process. And it's not exactly easy to do it. It's not, it's kind of spoon exhausting. It's almost less exhausting to focus on like, Brittany said the word dusty. Brittany compared two people to each other. None of that matters. Unless it does matter. And that's why when I make content, I'm also kind of making it for the people that think it still matters. So I can kind of get them to the point where it doesn't matter. Because it, the world is suffering because we think it matters. 
but also the world is exactly the way it should be because it's itself reflected back, right? Cognitive says, what if we were just autistic and in a borderline bubble masking as borderline to fit in and you fix the borderline by moving to the ADHD bubble where you fit in better and can mask less? less. Ooh. Um, what if you were just autistic and in the borderline bubble? Um, I mean, you know what the irony is, if you want a real answer, is like all of those things are constructs autism and like PTSD and all of those things are scannable right now. We're looking at brain scans and there's something really profound about that. But also, um, I, I mean, these things are kind of constructs, right? Even borderline, this idea that like your brain is always that way, like your brain is no way. Your brain is having a perception issue. It's not even the same thing. Like you can now grow your borderline. You'll probably get better with the right help. It's just a lot of people don't do the right kind of work. And so they don't get better. You know what I mean? It is kind of like ironic. But like, look, whether I'm labeled whatever I'm labeled, we're not even sure if it's objective. It's only objective through the perception. So in this bubble where we call this word autistic, that's what someone is. Or in this word where we call somebody lesbian, that's what they are. Now, if there is some study we can do that says, oh, all people with autism have this brain, then that's kind of amazing. Like there's some genetic markers. Hank just did a video on autism. But so there's some there's some data that might be, quote, objective outside of that construct that we might find. But it is very interesting. A diet water. That's funny. Um, OK, but are but are some people more special than others? No. Like in a philosophy sense, absolutely not. Like in a philosophy sense, absolutely not. Only through perception. So when I say philosophy sense, I mean outside of the subjective, moving into the objective. Objectively, no. Through the per so objectively meaning outside of space and time and perception, no. Humans could not be more special to like to to even to judge is to perceive, which is to ego. To put anybody in a hierarchy is to ego. So the moment you have an opinion, you are now egoing. The moment I share an opinion, that is my ego. I have an opinion. The I is in existence, but the I doesn't even exist in the objective because it's just shared perception. So that's why you have to say, what conversation are we having? Are we having a macro conversation? or a micro conversation, macro, meaning like the universe, micro, meaning my perception of ego, my consciousness, right? Yui says, if none of it matters, wouldn't that mean what we say matters is what matters? In the micro, not in the macro. In the micro, and even in the macro, you could argue that our energy is kind of key to the universe because we're recycled energy. And so we do matter to the universe because we all play a role, whether we like it or not. So even if you do nothing with your whole life and you just sit on the couch all day, you're doing something for the universe, your energy that's going to get recycled back into the earth and into the universe. So that's why I don't care if people don't do anything with their lives because your life is just, you're just little energy fuel. Like we're kind of, we're kind of like, we're kind of manure. Like we're kind of the universe's manure. <laughs> See, is that too funny? Is that a joke? But like, we're kind of like the life force for the universe because we just get like recycled back into it. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me how you spend your life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. You're going to die. So you're going to, it doesn't matter. And if you're like Dr. K, you believe in reincarnation, you know, which I don't, but Dr. K does. So maybe it's real. Maybe, you know, but reincarnation is also just that recycled concept. Some people could say, I believe in reincarnation because I acknowledge we're like energy getting recycled back in. Okay, if you call that reincarnation, then I guess I believe in reincarnation, right? Lexi says, I get almost the same feeling from watching your streams as I do from listening to Maya Angelis speeches. Maya, Maya, people who speak from their experience with wisdom are so soothing to my brain. I mean, that's the kind of content I consume, so I'm honored. But that's the kind of content, co content that I like too. Tell me your story, your anecdotal experience. What did you figure out about life? Because when we say we stand on the shoulders of giants, that's all we're doing. We're just asking people, what did you figure out? 
and then we're adding it to our understanding. You know, Rasped, are autism and BPD similar? Is it easy to confuse them? Uh, women with autism often get misdiagnosed as borderline because traditionally, misogyny, uh, people didn't see women as, they thought of it as a boy, a boy thing. Autism is like a boy thing. So even now, lots of women are assumed to be borderline more than autistic. Um, that's changing. But they think of ADHD and autism as like a boy thing. And it's not gendered. So it's kind of ironic, I suppose. But that's just like sexism. That's just how people, that's just how people came to bad conclusions, even though they had the information. And I think that's interesting, right? Like we have the information, but the conclusions you come to is key. And I think we come to a lot of bad conclusions. Now, I come to a lot of conclusions. If you think I'm wrong, I would love to hear that. Like agree to disagree, but here's what I think. Then we could have discourse. But usually what people do is they just say like, you hurt my feelings. And I'm like, okay. I'm sorry, I think. I don't know. Am I sorry? Do I have to? I'm happy to change my language. I've done it before. When was the last time I said the R word? I'm doing pretty good. Huh? Did I not change my language because it was hurting people's feelings? I have no attachment to words, but apparently people do. Fair. I think that's also the struggle is like, I don't really have attachment to words. So when people talk, I just translate it in my brain, what they're saying. Oh, this is what I think they're saying. This is what they're getting at. Like, I remember that one time we watched Jordan Peterson and Verviki on chat and I was like translating them. I sent the video to like family members and these people are like deep into philosophy. And they're like, uh, I can't keep up with this conversation. It's they're using language I don't understand. And I was like, oh, which is always interesting that like I could watch it with stream and we could like digest it. But I send it to other people and they're like, I, I can't follow this conversation. I'm like, oh, hmm. OK. Oh, Juliet says I started I started young with documentaries on TV and then the internet opened up so much more. Nature is just mind blowing. I love it. So many things to be fascinated about and people are endless knowledge. Bro, same. I grew up watching so many documentaries and so many, you know, philosophy conversations and so much religious stuff. And oh, I just love it all. I just like, whoa. So then that is also the problem where I just don't, I don't think um, people categorize people the way that I do all the time. So it makes it harder to digest. Like, do you, did you guys grow up in the 90s where, like, if people had too many tattoos, you wouldn't listen to them when they talked? They couldn't even get a job. Like, they couldn't even get a job. And now that's changed, right? Like, I remember working at Ralph's, and I remember one day my coworker didn't have any tattoos showing, and the next day he came in with his tattoo showing because they changed the rules. And I was like, whoa. Like, we have to understand we are living in constant changing times and whatever norm you grew up with is always changing. There is no, no such thing as normal. There's only the expectation of behavior based off culture and religion and, and all of that. I mean, the idea of normal is some sort of like safety blanket people use to say like, I'm normal though, right? Everybody's normal and nobody is normal. Everybody is normal and nobody is normal. And I think it's like this like fear of like, if I'm not normal, they'll come for me. If I'm not one of them, though, like, do you guys ever hear about uh, what was that black actress who masked as a white woman for her life? And some people felt like I would have done the same. It was during like segregation. And then some people were like, I can't believe she did that. Like, because like other people can't pretend they're white, but she got away with it. She was like a singer and she was like a, uh, a performer. Like there are white women who pretend to be like Asian or something. But then there are black women who also kind of passed for white. And so frankly, like I don't blame them, but they actually rode that shit all the way to like fame. And I think about that and I'm like, what would I have done? Because I'm not in that world. Like the world I have to worry about is like language and masking. And I have to remember like, oh, not all places are as like interested in hearing women speak. But I don't ever, I don't have to like, I'm Middle Eastern, but I'm, you know, I'm white. So like people don't care. So I don't have to play that game. But what if I had to? What would I do? Or you know how people are always like, oh, if I could if I could go back in time, what time would I choose? Taylor Swift would choose the 1800s, guys, without the racism. If you guys have been following that bubble. So did anybody have any other criticism? I'm open. I'm here. Otherwise, we can watch 
let's watch the history of the entire world because that's how my brain works. I saw that video and I was like, oh, that's how I think about life a lot of the time. I haven't watched it in a while, so maybe some things have changed, but we should watch it together. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Ah, Seema says my partner and I were trying to think of who we knew that were the most neurotypical, normie, and healthy. And funnily enough, it was hard to think of someone and they ended up being odd because of their normal. Uh huh. That's okay. That is, I did that the other day. That's so funny. I also did that with my partner the other day. We were like, who's normal? Name somebody, name somebody. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something about them. That's not normal. Tell me who it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Fishy says critique. You aren't gay enough. Honestly, fair, fair, fair. Okay. I think we did it. I feel really confident. Hopefully this helped anybody who had any questions. Thank you for hearing me out. I'm open to criticism. I just can't do the emotional labor for you. Um, so make sure that, uh, you know, you're not making my life about you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I try not to make my life about you. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's it. That's the end of the video. In my head, in real life I'm in bed. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 